drunk, one doing chores, does he even know me? Ooh, I'm never sure when he'll be home, get into trouble on my own, I don't get lonely. Welcome back to the Paladin Central Minor League. My name is Merlo without mustache. And with me uh, on this way, actually, Kresnik. Yeah, I'm happy to have you here, Merlo, after, you know, you, you vanishing from the scene. You yoinked away by by your home country to to not be able to be with us on the yeah. on the main broadcast for a little bit. But happy to be able to be here bringing more and more Paladins here with you. And what better place to start than, than home, right? Than in Europe here to bring the, the finals of the closed bracket week, the, the week that everything has been leading up to after three weeks of, of open gameplay. Yeah, actually, I wasn't here for the long run, so I don't really know what to expect between the two teams. But uh, one thing for sure, we know we have a one game advantage since, of course, we're coming from the semifinals, you know, yes. uh, from us also the winner bracket. But, you know, you, know, you tell the story uh, and you describe to me these two teams. So tell me what's happening and what's going to happen eventually. So Rosvet were are the team that in this best of five for the grand final, since we are starting right here instead of doing any previous games. We have quite a few to go through today, but Rosvet were the team that won and stayed in the winner's bracket, managing to maintain that one game lead that they're going to have in this. And they're the team that has kind of all the old talent. They, they have Simsalu, Zerini, they have King Nick coming from the console team. They have Phobuzz previously in the PPC and all these players that are have kind of just brought themselves and said, hey, maybe we can win PCML this weekend. Seems like good luck for them so far. EU Five Heads were the team that won in previous uh, runs of the league. They have uh, some some great talent that has kind of been going back and forth with Rosvet. Sometimes they get the upset, sometimes they get upset themselves. They seem a little bit inconsistent, but now that we're here on this new patch, even though we haven't rotated to the new map rotation yet, we still have all those patch changes live, the Vivian nerfs, the Makoa buffs, the Lex buffs, all those things that will probably affect things quite a bit. But but Rosvet, uh, this I think the favored team here, they won, I believe, most of the previous weeks, whether they played against EU5 heads, whether they played against Plebs playing, they were always the team that came out on top. And wherever we start here in this set, we'll definitely set the tone for how it's going to go. Definitely. And uh, we're actually ready in a little bit for uh, picks and bans. And as you stated before, <laughs> meta didn't shift so much, actually. Uh, we're kind of seeing the same picks all over again. But of course, you know, anything can change as soon as people can feel comfortable, you know, with those buffed picks, for example. Makoa, Lex, as you yep. mentioned, you know, thanks to that sprint midair. There's a lot of uh, possibilities down there. And of course, EO still banned, uh, yes. you know, and so we wouldn't be able to actually see another and different healer. But yeah, as you can see, Makoa actually mentioned it, first ban. Yeah, we are literally traveling back in time here, Merlo, with this Makoa ban. Makoa was the ban from when he came out until the start of this year, and here we are back again, even if it's for a different reason. I mean, Makoa, of course, the hook is always going to be impactful, but his ability to shield and lock down choke points, especially on Jaguar Falls, one of the better maps for that half-shell Makoa, makes sense for them to get rid of him. Off tank also continued to be focused by Ross, but meanwhile, some an EU focus ban by the EU five heads with Willow getting removed and Genos, I think always a, a smart ban here. And with, with what's left, I mean, we could see Torvald. This is the, the NA flavor kind of flowing into EU a little bit. Yeah, I was expecting Ruckus, of course, since we are in EU, you know, it's all that always that kind of pick. But of course we saw a soaring Torvald in, you know, in the last four weeks, at least, uh, you know, that bubble shield, the possibility of having actually that flanker, like a Zen or Koga, perhaps, you know, to just daze uh, and go through the enemy backline and get a kill without consequences. And also he uh, is a great combination with Lex, thanks to that sustainability. Sure. Of course, on the other side, we got Vivian and Corvus. So what about those two picks? What about that? Scary, man. I mean, Vivian got nerfed, but she still has the same damage that she had. She's missing just 50, but only when she has her ult available, which isn't all the time. So not, not a huge change in damage in Corvus. I think still not as fire and forget as he once was. I think the bad Corvuses are going to kind of fall a little bit more to the wayside while the people who really put the time in with this champion know how to rotate their marks, know who needs it the most, are going to kind of soar. And I think you 5 heads have that 
skill with them and a really aggressive draft here to start from Ross Fed. I mean, Torvald is kind of anti-dive, but now that they see that Vivian, they say, we want to get aggressive. We want to run down this, this back line that we think we can. So we're going to grab this Vivian. We're going to have executes for whatever tank you get. And we're going to get this ROM. We're going to be able to break through whatever defensive line you have. We're going to be sending everybody flying up, knocking you over a shield. We're going to be in the middle of your team. And we're going to have this sustain with that Torvald to back it up. Actually, right now, uh, the fact that Rom is completely uncontested worries me a little bit. Many, many times again, we saw what an uncontested Rom can do inside the enemy team. And at this point, you just you don't have the possibility of picking a Grover, you know, without those deep roots. Mm -hmm. You can go with Terminus, you know, you can absorb kind of the damage that he does, you know, stuff like that, but it's not going to be enough. And uh, since also Geno is banned, and there you go, Terminus coming in right off the, you know, uh, the five head seems um, apart from that, you know, he still has so much mobility at his disposal. Maybe the damage is a little bit cut off, but yeah, so far, so good right now. Um, yeah, the Russian team looks way better. Yeah, they just let you know, not a Russian team, just a Russian oh, name. Sorry. They sorry. had it. No, 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 it is a it is a it is Ross Vet, the Russian, the Russian name. It's all a mix of old PPL players. Phobuzz just really held on to that name, which I believe means sunrise and in. in, in in Russian, if I recall correctly, but I think you have five heads right oh now, other goodness. than the Androxus, they have to death ball a little bit, I think, just to keep the siphon kind of in the way of that ROM when he gets aggressive. But Rosbet really went all in. They have the Furia, one of the more aggressive healers left in the game. Not only does she have a good a stun potential with the beams, she has the inflame, which is you know illusory rift, but for death instead of life, and the Mave, which can go in really far with them. A biggest problem here for me, maybe, would be. Every time I see Simsalu play Maeve, I feel like he's just so far off on an island. Whenever he's playing Maeve with Rosvet, that EU5 heads can punish that. Grover will help with that significantly, of course. But Corvus Grover, I'm a little worried about the lack of utility from the supports. And, and these roots from whoever ends up playing it for EU5 heads is going to have to be pretty much massive to make up for that. Yeah, we're actually ready to jump into the game in a, you know, a little bit. But of course, the fact that they uh, pivoted towards a Grover, uh, that scares me a lot. You, of course, you have Deep Roots, you have to counter that ROM, but now you have a single tank onto that point, and it's going to be Terminus. Mm -hmm. Not the best tanker. Of course, as soon as he has the ultimate, he's going to be super okay. You know, He's going to be fine. You have actually two tanks on that point uh, at your disposal, but before that, he's basically useless, and they're going to play uh, you know, around that aggressive kill potential. Uh, yeah, but what about good. talents? Yeah. The talents, nothing really too surprising for me, I think, yeah. pretty much. Standard across the board, and Terminus doesn't really need that crush when he's not the one playing into the Vivian, but I mentioned this earlier, the Death Ball start is going to be what EU5 heads has to play because that Siphon has to be in the way, and I think, uh, blinking, I, I didn't even notice, Mutu Torvald, definitely not what I expected to see from him of, of all players, but they, they still have this space being held by EU5 heads, but they're sacrificing a lot of cap time to make it happen. Mm -mm, of course, they have, you know, they gotta do that. They got the superior tank uh, composition right there. They just need to trade that first blood, and uh, it's gonna come down to, of course, the enemy healer right now. Androx is trying to find a kill. He's gonna get shot down. There's no way they can put to actually pressure on that point. They just need to find another kill. Maybe on that terminus, it's gonna be all alone. Zen actually going in with the bubble shield and everything. It's gonna be super safe right now. The situation doesn't seem to change too much right now. Oh, oh, King Nick, he misses the spite. That's that's not what they wanted to have happening this early right now. The ultimate not really hitting the way it did, but U5 heads, they still have control of the point, even with Possibo now getting forced off. Absolutely. And right now we're going to switch down to Meeve and see if she can actually be able to get a kill or two. But they're just compromising onto that point. They're just stacking up. And it's going to be super difficult to, to actually get in. And it shows right now with five heads. They got control. They got the overtime. It's going to take a little while before they actually cap the point. And Drox is one versus one against the Zen. But of course, it's going to be easy for him. Uh, actually, Zen trying to touch that point. He's going to try to overextend that overtime right there. It's not going to be enough. And the five heads right now, the composition is actually working. They, you know, managed to find a couple of kills. And then after you got those, you got the terminus ult, you stand on point, and you win. And having all of the sustain on the Zin for Rosvet, I thought would maybe make things a little bit better. We saw him going into the point 
with Billow Up, he got Torv Bubble, he got Fury Healed. I love this double kind of burst sustain composition that Rossfed are playing with. I think U5 heads, for now at least, playing on this Vivian kind of have the answer, but small misstep. Yoinko goes in early and then they catch their Terminus with a spike. Mmm, that's a double coming in hot. Terminus actually trying to respawn right there to delay a little bit, you know, uh, the enemy composition. They're gonna try and Droxus actually has the accursed armor to trying to do a little bit of a swipe right there. Uh, Midnight getting popped off. Of course, Mevi is gonna die soon after. And uh, yeah, five heads right now. They're just stomping through each and every one of the enemy, you know, champion. And uh, they're gonna go. And this is gonna be probably the most difficult part because everybody's cooped up into the respawn. And mm -hmm. you see, you got Terminus, you got Vivian. There's so many bodies right there. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard, I think, for them to to really break out and. I, I think Rossford, all they really want to do, even if this gets capped, I think what they really have to focus on is just hanging on and getting to later in the game. Once we get into that caught three territory, these this Corvus, this Grover combination plus the resilience will Ooh. hurt a lot. But look at that, King Nick just tearing Ooh. through him. Yeah, it's gonna go for a triple right there. Oh, that's the Mave steal, but of course, great comeback from him. And actually, uh, yeah, Rossford, they basically turned and flipped the script right there. The tables are turned. 60 seconds is not a lot of time. And those mounts can go down pretty easily right now. As you can see, everybody getting blocked by me and all the others. Korea, Rom, etc. They're just going to shoot and then run straight back onto their base. They also have ultimates. So I don't know. This point ain't going to be worth it no more. Yeah, definitely not going to spend anything, I think, at, at this point. Maybe something like a Zin ultimate, I yeah. if any, for this defense. But... They need to fight this because they need to get that term ultimate. That reanimate going to be crucial for the fights to come here. And just no way to break through. The sustain, now that it can play as a wall in front of them, this death ball maybe not working quite as well for you five heads. Mm -mm -mm. And remember, as you said before, you still have the Zen ultimate to just take a kill or two as soon as somebody, you know, falls below 40 HP, something like that. And uh, right now, Zarini actually training kills. Meave is going to go down, but all the others are backed up into this little bit of a space. Of course, that's the high ground, so it's super dangerous for Pyvez to actually push. We are in full-on swing all the time. Right now, Zen actually trying to carry the entire team, and Drox is going to be alone, trying to flank onto the side. Zen is going to get him, and that's the kill that you needed. Double kill right there, and those chances are gone off the window. Yeah, no way for them to make it happen there. And uh, unfortunate for, uh, honestly, for the Androxus, for Yoinko, because he, he hit his reversal, just happens that the reversal went right into a counter, which doesn't count for his reset. So not able to, to make this keep going. And looking at these KDs, this is actually exactly what I wanted to have brought up during this pause time, because Simsalu, five deaths. I feel like whenever we cut to him, like we cut to him at one point during that defense, and he was just 1v1ing a Vivian. Like he dove in to fight a Vivian. Zarini did have to commit to make it happen, but there's so much healing on that team. I feel like it's so risky to do that early and into this Corvus and Grover. They are so cauterized light. They they have caught one on Zarini, and then only two projectile flankers for Rosfit have the rest of the cauterized. So it definitely inconsistent in that application. They're going to be able to heal themselves up uh, potentially quite well. Corvus spreads heals great. They have Whirlwind waiting for them, but. This surround that they're starting here with King Nick and Mutu already wrapping behind could be a way to kind of sneak a kill through all that healing they have. He actually uh, got a couple of hits in already, and uh, he has full-on space, and Droxus is going to fall down pretty easily. Grover actually picks him up uh, out of nowhere. Uh, Zen is ready to go, and Droxus trying to flank a little bit from behind with the Vivian. So they're ready. Is a mishmush of people just going at it, trying to find a single kill to unlock the point. And the first kill is going to be me right now. So, uh, yeah, Rasvet in a little bit of a tense situation. And of course, thanks to the other kill. Mudo actually with the ultimate, uh, of course, takes another one thanks to an environmental kill. And uh, no, right now, they just got pushed back. Of course, you still have time, but 84%, you know, it's just too fast in uh, too short of a span of time. It was a fantastic hyper beam from that Tor Vault to, to really turn that around. Mutu catching the tank off of the point when you're solo tank in a composition like this where sustain is so important, y you can't just end up falling like that. And Kofigs on this Corvus, he falls right after two kills right away for Osfet. 
Hmm. And Drugs is right now having a tough time. Yonko actually getting killed by Meeve, and Vivian is gonna be the next. Uh, yeah, King Nick right now doing plays, carrying the entire team. Terminus is gonna be staggered a little bit right there. Uh, he still has the ultimate, but of course you want to go back to your team, trying to respawn and maybe use that for a better position. But uh, of course you're sacrificing yourself to actually get onto that point. The card is moving and is moving fast. They're already basically knocking on the enemy door at 1 minute and 44. Yeah, look at that Yoinko actually. I like this flank, but he's in a risky spot, but no range damage at all. King Nick only. The Yomi strike to really get that range, so they get this kill, and there's no way to really respond until Zorini falls on point, and you five heads can get quite aggressive here, but watching Sims on the side, they might have a way to surround and possibly instigate if they're feeling it. If they find the right spot, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And right now, Meeve actually seems to be the one in danger, uh, trying to find that angle, uh, but of course, they all fell back, you know, they were waiting onto their main tanks, you know, at this point, Zarini actually able to go into that back line. And, you know, he's sprinting right now. They're going to find a kill. And Drox is actually going against that. Meeve is going to find the last shot. No can do. Furia actually healing her. And that's the turnaround once again. <laughs> Sim doing great damage right there. And, of course, thanks to Furia, he was safe. And, uh, we know, we done Drox is gone. You got no damage. <laughs> With Vivian gone, again, you don't have enough damage to actually push them through. So yeah, they're all gone. Terminus can actually spend a respawn right here, but uh, it's not going to be worth it, even though you're risking to go 3-1 as soon as possible. If, if you hold on to it, you get enough comeback mechanic for that next fight. So I think smart way to do it, Zarini, just makes the space that they need for this def for this offense to go through, and it works. This Zin Furia Torvald combo is really brutal and EU5 heads don't have the burst damage really to deal with it. It's kind of all on Yoinko who is constantly matching into Simsalu. And even then, you know, you fight someone, you saw, you were talking about it earlier, that 1v1 between Maeve and Andro, it was a 1v2 and a half basically by the end because of a thousand damage, a thousand health bubble came in, the thousand heal, heal came in with the shield on top of that. Plus I was going to say the ammo, but I'm talking about Maeve, so maybe not Maybe not my finest moment there in my thought process, but you okay. uh, five heads, they have come back, they have the reanimate for it, they have the whirlwind, which I feel like I'm not seeing spent maybe as effectively as I am in the other regions, using it in some of these chaotic fights just to keep the team up. I feel like maybe they're holding on to it a little more than they were before. A little bit, of course, uh, but then again, <laughs> they were so split during those fights. As you can see before, right now, Rasa, they are just basically turning Sulkers out of them. They went to the back, they got the first kill onto the enemy healer. Corvus actually trying to do a little bit of damage inside that point to trying to wait for that recap, but everybody's going down. And that's basically a game that's gonna be lost soon enough because Terminus is completely alone. So he cannot respawn yeah. right there. Uh, I think he just, no, yeah, he, he, he gave up, but at this point, everybody's gonna get uh, stopped right here. Those mounts will not be effective. They just need to find a kill maybe when Androxus and then they can move further. But I don't think so. Let's just see. Let's just oh, see what happens. Maybe. I mean, looking at how they have it, they could Vine Tech in. Maybe Corvus actually is making it. But no, it doesn't, make, no. doesn't get it all the way. No, no, Merlo. Yeah, that was unfortunate right there. But of course the positioning was already done and when yeah, Grover is your yeah. first death, of course you got you got Corvus at your side, you know, you still have the damage, you still have control of the point, uh, but that was not enough, you know. Uh, the, the, the damage was falling out pretty easily and Androx is not his best game right there. You know, he had some serious problem engaging actually. It's a really, really hard game for him. I mean, look at what he has to play into. I mean, at the end of the game, yeah. going through four and nine, but it just, how do you really make that happen? And when they needed to burst through as a team there near the very end, King Nick actually hit a really crucial Yomi strike. It cleaved through every single member of their team that was leaving for some reason all in a conga line as they planned for how they wanted to leave their spawn. They all go down to half HP. They can't get through. Then no one there to absorb that damage. Passivo can't make it just yet, uh, but they just had the sustain in the end of the game that the fact that they had it mixed between shielding and healing means they don't fall off as quickly as the eu5 heads drafted absolutely and right now muru actually just died two times and phobos too actually as the main healer uh, the, the problem with the five head composition right there is that they didn't have another tank you know a single tank terminus of course you're gonna go around and trying to find that kill you know you're gonna try to find the damage and then you jumping out onto that point and try to cap it but uh if you don't find a kill that you're 
strategy basically falls off and there was no way to actually kill Zin in any capacity. And he was able to do 97,000 damage. That, that's insane. Mm -hmm. That's that's crazy. That's actually crazy. Even though you were basically supported on both sides. Thanks yeah. to Muru and of course Phobos healing you over and over and over again. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was great play by King Nick, playing, busting out the controllers in something that people normally say you can't really do as well. It's definitely not that bad. The projectiles are pretty massive, but King Nick obviously using the cooldowns well at keeping himself alive, thanks to the help from Mewtwo and, and Phobas on that Furia. But I, I, that map, the, the first in this set, even though Rosvet start up 1 0, it was the first one played 2 0 now to them. So you five heads, this is a really tough one to fight back from they have to win three straight against a team that looked as strong as rosvet just did that is not easy yeah also the mental capacity to just say okay now we just have to win mm -hmm. undisputed you know undisputed uh, it's super hard and it's super tasking onto your team because you need to find you know that opening but i think we're ready for uh picks and bands for the next game and for the next map of course and uh, we're jumping into a bright marsh actually so interesting map interesting you know interesting choice and right here is another standard map you know uh yep. skill does matter and inara does too of course crazy you know seeing bright marsh being played again i thought this map was gone merlo i mean this yeah. is oh man it's How it's already been happen? merlo it's been one day it's been one day and i miss bright marsh already i i every time i i get it in casual i'm like oh that's i that's cute. i remember I remember a time, and, and you five heads definitely probably should be comfortable on this map. They've had some miracle plays uh, on here before, so it makes sense to go here if they need a miracle to turn this around at the moment. Vivian first ban, though, taking it away from they're the ones who picked it last time, but just don't want to see Rosvet with it either. King Nick obviously knows how to pilot it. Rosvet answered by targeting a tank. Get rid of that Atlas again. Yeah, they don't want to really fight against the Vivian, so that's that's suspicious, that's strange, but okay. You we're talking about a mirror, and of course not against oh, Torvald, yeah. but at that point you got Makoa unlocked. And remember, Makoa, you know, starting to show up in the meta once again, so that could be it, you know, from Rasped. But I wanna know about that miracle, you know, you envision a miracle. What's the best pick they can actually take right now, the five heads, to the just best. you know gain gain the upper end? I mean, they could just play. They could just play with the Genos, ended up with a Lex, and just okay. have that kind of style of gameplay, right? They could have that Lex kind of hyper carry with Genos and Corvus both getting through, and the Makoa. Any of them, I think, can make it work. Hell, you can maybe even play Pirates or something like that. I don't know if that would be the miracle, but Makoa first pick. Again, we're back to 2019, 2018, 2017. Every 2018, year, baby. Perfect. And that's why you have that shirt, because we have traveled back in time here for this Makoa to be played. I The hook can turn a fight from a loss to a win if you pull the right if you pull the right champion on the other side so eu5 heads start things off well and rosfed pick something that kind of gets countered by the terminus right into it there he's going to be kind of eating those hooks and getting damaged pretty hard hmm interesting choice right there probably they want to go hard against makoa as soon as he takes a hook maybe the entire team piles onto him and they are going to try to you know get that shot down that could be an idea. At this point, you have the Corvus. So you just need to find a, a nice DPS pick. So I'm envisioning for Rasfed probably a victor mm -hmm. or something. Uh, Genos coming in for five heads. So that's okay. That's fine. Okay. At this point, anything can happen. You know, you can go from Kanessa to, uh, you know, Koga to anything. True. Uh, Koga. Koga would be great, actually. I mean, yeah. maybe not at, at, right. Maybe not at the moment, but maybe a little bit later. Shaolin. Of course, will counter any kind of aggressive flank play that they really want to do, assuming those sand traps connect. And they do have the CEO of Shaolin on the team, so I think it makes sense to pick that character and we'll have try that it. there. And this is oh, this is a, oh my god, this is so much pressure on this Makoa right now. By the way, Merlo, just mm -hmm. having these hooks because you can hook Androxus through his reversal, you can hook Terminus through his siphon. They pretty much have to hit every hook, but it can make it turn around Maybe in another open. double flanker map they want simsalu back on this mave on a map where verticality can be king yeah and at this point you can basically run circles around makoa if he misses that hook you basically have a standing totem that 
you know can do nothing also the the projectile arc is super weird you know because it's not mm -hmm. a straight shot so it's gonna be hard to hit those you know targets up in the air uh in our coming in and the second tank and of course as i said before bright marsh you cannot have an ara you need to have an ara and block one of those entrances and then basically turn the entire enemy team for the sidelines you know they need to enter from the side and that's the moment when you pick up the kill, you know, when you got yeah. Tyra, when you got Makoa, etc. Uh, but I'm scared of Tyra. I don't think it's such a super meta pick. I think it's comfortable for them to have her. But I don't know. You tell me what do you think about the entire composition? Because, you know, Geno, my, Solo Healer, Tyra. My biggest issue is the Geno Solo Healer with Inara Makoa. Yeah. Both of these tanks kind of really want heals and someone in chat actually says lex was the pick and i think i agree i think lex instead of this tyro would have been fantastic lex duels really well into these characters uh, as long as you don't get hit, caught in that dead zone when you're in a fight that lifesteal will stack he's so good with those stacking damage bonuses that that genos really would have enabled him but here they are kind of needing to win these fights fast or else they're just gonna get melted and not be able to heal it quick well, we're just going to witness because we're jumping back into the game in Brightmarsh and we're ready for the potential match point, uh, if I'm correct, but definitely. What about, uh, you know, composition right now? You think it, anything unusual for you? No, I, I see Luminary, of course, half shell, mm -hmm. grace. pretty much standard stuff. Yeah, nothing really too, too crazy here. Half shell, the new meta for the Makoa talents now that you have that one change to barrier reef not having to run carapace maxed to get more resets just a little bit more consistency here in that card for them and nothing else too crazy i think across the board for it but let's see how rossfed play this they have multiple flankers and they have a willow so i think they're going to want to play surrounding them but an early Ooh. hook and an immediate kill that's exactly what you want from your koa yeah definitely that's the playbook right there and you need to have that play because of course you get the advantage and they're ready to jump onto that point right now uh, actually stacking into the back in Ara, having troubles, as you said, onto the side, if you've seen before, this kind of play. Willow, single dead zone. There's no way you can actually move you. There's no way you can actually counter that. So even staying on that point is super, you know, harsh for the enemy tanks. And uh, right now, Rossfed, they're just cleaning up kills right now. Getting one, two, they're going hard onto that in Ara and shawl in. They're basically all cooped back once again. So doesn't really matter that first blood. They they went back and they got no potential to actually come onto that point and get another yeah. kill. Yeah, that spam on the point made it very, very difficult, but they can counter with their own as long as Vixar manages to stay alive here. That firebomb can do quite a bit of denial here. As you can see, Zarini already has to leave. It gets knocked so low and really has to hope he has a bit of siphon left and he doesn't. Possible will finds the first. That was a well on point wall right there. That was the kicker right there. They got the kill thanks to that, thanks to Inara, of course, because it was <laughs> blocked, basically. I had no way and no chance of escaping. So right now, uh, yeah, Tyvan's actually getting in, taking the point from a single kill. And that's the problem with, you know, you know, with that kind of composition. You need to go for that kill if you don't have those kills. If you don't continue to actually snowball the enemy team, it's difficult to get the point. And as you can see, the point is being taken and given and taken once again. And right now, Rossford, they are the one onto the point and capturing it. So it's just a, you know, a snowball left and right over and over. It was a great play, honestly, by Stimsalu. More than, more than anything over there, I would say. He came around the side, walked into four players, managed to kill one of them, and buy just enough time with an overtime trigger to get their Terminus onto the point. Now Simsalu wants to be impactful again. They spend the midnight, but they're not willing to go anywhere. Simsalu gets knocked low so early. They just have to wait it out and settle, but Vixar might be trapped in this window room if they're willing to move. Ooh, one Roxas right now. Ooh, getting shot at hard for him actually Nara spending a single ultimate to go with the combination with Genos free time and space and of course you also have Tyra onto the back side taking those two kills also thanks to Shaolin the damage was there triple kill actually going in uh, for five ads that's pretty good right there a lot of time gained a lot of tempo for them and uh what's gonna happen now what's the best defense option for five ads they need to play again kind of around their Makoa. his half shell is going to be really crucial they want to force rosvet to shoot the half shell because half shell does not get its cooldown unless it takes damage so it needs to be in a place 
that can at least have an impact. Also, Yonka needs to play with somebody. He's now back with his team, but Shaolin literally left completely alone in mid. Hook missed. This is not looking good as a start. He was peeking corners with the taunt, of course, but um, yeah, it was not super useful because everybody just pushed right through him and they went for that enemy backline. And, uh, you know, that, that's the big mistake right there because they got three kills right now. Uh, super difficult for them to actually defend Shaolin in a tough spot. Neve actually jumping onto him right now, trying to take the kill with the combo. Uh, not perfectly executed right there. That's a, that's a really missed Big, big chance. You still have the Midnight, though. You can pop. I, I don't think it's going to happen right here, though. The cards are really close, and they're, there's not going to really be any hidden information if they spend it, right? But they can feel comfortable, at least, that they forced out that hook, and now they're going to be willing to get aggressive. They just need to find the NR right there. There you go. Right now, me actually trying to jump onto that high ground, but Makoa is going to be the bigger target, and uh, nobody's going to jump onto that point. Nobody's left, so that's going to be a 2-0. Very clean from Rossfed right now. And I, I'm just not liking the Genos more and more here. I feel like you need to really draft around it if you get it. You can't just throw them into any composition. Well, one of the biggest strengths of Half Shell is that you're just not really comfortable shooting at it because you don't want to give him that cooldown reduction, right? So when Makoa throws up a Half Shell, but he has a Genos healer only, he's like, all right, I'm going to reheal. They're not going to shoot me because why would they? They're going to give me so much cooldown back. They push him. He backs up. But normally he would have cauterized cleansed at this point. He'd be able to get it back. He is getting about, what, 600 heals or something. And then the half shell goes down. And, and it didn't really make a huge difference at the end of the day. So the, the Genos paired with it, I, I think they really wanted some other form of sustain. Even a sky would have been kind of nice here. Smoke and dagger. But Rosvet, they're starting aggressive. Possibly not so low. And they're hard focusing the Sonara. Ooh, and there you go, the sad zone actually doing his job. And uh, yeah, there you go. That, that's the basic strat. You just go with the, of course, the dead zone. You're trying to put as much spam as possible since you have the verticality, you know, the projectiles. And there you go. It's it's so easy to actually do. And it's so hard, hard to counter. You just need to move the entirety of your team. You need to shift the balance and go into the side lane, maybe inside a building to cover yourself from that unrelentless damage. But there you mm -hmm. go. Right now, Rossfed, they actually have 60% going on. They have so much pressure. Mako is not going to be able to find any targets right there. It's He's going to go with tar yeah, Terminus right there, but no can do. You know, everybody's going to die inside his backline. I and mean, actually connecting... Pressure. Yeah, connecting on that Terminus can be great, but there was no one really to follow up, and, and Rossfed just to meet, once that Midnight came in, just wiped the floor with them. No real way for, for a response coming from the other side. Uh, the hooking terminus that's one of the reasons you pick makoa in the first place it was a first pick of course the terminus got forced into it they just really need yoinko playing with someone i thought his positioning was actually pretty great there where, where, where they had it just being able to contest that side door no one was really able to push through but yoinko again gets caught out just needs to be so much more careful even if it's a trade one for one for it mm -mm -mm. Absolutely, also because he's the main tank at, the, at this point, apart from Inara. So he needs to do, you know, that shift a little bit, you know, going in and out as soon as he finds the kill. But as you said before, like, the position is, was great. He had the positioning, he did not have the follow-up. Everybody was dying behind him, you know. Uh, and at that point, you pay, you know, you pay the price. And Terminus just going in, you know, he has the possibility of... Uh, Actually doing a lot of damage, if I'm contested. Androx is finding their Genos, and uh, yeah, I think that's it, because you don't have the healer. It's going to take a lot of time to respawn. I'm just going to go in, and are actually going with the stun, trying to go one versus five. Makoa actually getting the good hook right there. Going to get the kill, and that's going to be a breather right there. Thanks also to, um, yeah, Corvus on to the other side. Everybody's just kind of trying to reset the situation. Yeah, I think the, the hook onto the the seismic crash there just that cc chain into the fire deletes the terminus but it, it happens so fast and they don't get any more kills afterwards so now ross that have a chance to, to reset and go and you can see how quickly the corvus can can burst heal this terminus and the hook doesn't get anything these hooks all have to find kills if you want to make makoa work at this level ross Fett, they just have to wait though their health gets knocked a little bit low shaolin buying them just a moment's respite as they hold. I, I, I like the way that they're holding this right side, though, playing off of the half shell only when they get aggressive, but hole may be open now with this midnight. 
Ooh, and there you go. That's the first kill. Jano's not going to be able to escape anywhere. Androx is actually taking a lot of skill. That's a trade right there for Makoa. But once again, we saw Makoa inside the building, but he did not have a follow-up. He takes those hooks. You know, he has the potential, but nobody's following him for the kill. And uh, even Shaolin, at this point, the best guy, you know, inside uh, the enemy uh, team, you know, inside five ads gonna be able to take anything everybody's just trying to do kills in our actually doing and being a body for that last straw it's gonna be overtime terminus still have you know the possibility of respawning uh and yoinko alone by himself trying to take a a hook but yeah that's gonna be it that's gonna be a defense right there but they got all the elements you know they got tons of utility to actually take the last point mm -hmm. I, I think what had to happen there was they needed to be a little bit maybe slower on the sides and let Zarini tank a little bit more damage because what happened was they all kind of came in at the same time. Normally, it's what you want to do, but having reanimate, I think they could have played off of when that reanimate was coming live. If you know what I mean, just just instead of losing the flank early, bait them in and then just collapse mm, once they try yeah. to collapse on Zarini afterwards, find some kills that way because they can't stand on the point when they're scrambling, when they're walking away from that giant explosion, that's when you can, I think, make the most out of it. I don't know. I mean, once again, it comes down to execution, and uh, right now, it's been a little bit unclear from both sides, but of course, it's gonna be the potential last point and match point in total because of the, you know, game structure and set. So let's see what's gonna happen. So right now, yeah, early pick from Yanko, but we saw that last time, you know, he got the first blood, for example, and nothing came, came out of it, actually, defending his team with a half shell, and Druxus is gonna be super risky, actually oh takes the kill against God. the Pyra, we saw that, ooh, that's, that's bad, that's gonna hurt, that's gonna stink right there, and Ross just collapsing onto the enemy team right now, Five that's completely destroyed and exposed. Oh no, Vixar, beef in the back line. Just, I don't know if he was reloading. I don't know if he was trying to kill him with grenades and missed them all or something, but not a single thing connected onto a 2 HP King Nick who yeah. turns that around and they're making it so hard for, for EU5 heads to touch this point. 84%, of course, of the arm coming in. Actually, Jenna's not being killed right there, but it's going to be super low. And the victory coming from Rossfed. <laughs> We're on a, like a... a, a tightrope that whole time it was actually that fight was so close and then the it's the battle awesome. in the tree happens andro comes up on top and he's like all right well just walk in i guess we i think we win and then every single member of eu5 has just crumbled and rossvet they run away with week four of, of this closed bracket after I, a really successful run in the last couple of weeks this roster that they put together has has been looking phenomenal here in this in this european region yeah, impressive team, and actually, uh, they picked, you know, those suspicious picks right there, you know, they went against the Makoa, even though it was a full-on counter, they didn't care, they knew the follow-up, the follow-up didn't come, you know, any, in any shape or form, so they just went and collapsed onto the enemy team as soon as possible, but yeah, those last misplays, you know, they, they did happen, and I'm sorry for Yoinko, he, he played an amazing game, you know, each and every single hook, he actually got he even had those first two you know kills and entry frag kills inside that point but then nothing came from it you know no no mm. capitalization yeah no way to really make anything else uh, come of it afterwards and uh, damage wise they also had no way to really for you five heads they had also no way to really bully the back line they they could not pressure that 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 corvus at all who put out 112,000 healing only only 12k more than the geno so close there by admin managing to stay alive and spread those marks but the damage even without that boost ran away with they ran away with it on rossvet 80,000 for sim salute 85 for king nick mutu the only damage healer surprisingly a little bit lower on that board but he managed to go 12 and 2 on top of that so the, these damage dealers they 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 always made sure their their trades were worth it or someone else was there to take the glory for them Mm -mm -mm. And that basically worked out well in the end. Simply a uh, full-on, I don't want to say stomp, but the superiority of the team really mm -hmm. was shown. You know, they had the better, you know, meta, they had the better picks, and they also played on very standard maps when skill is everything, you know. You can't do a pirate ship on Bright March. I mean, you can, but uh, 
doesn't work that way. I don't way, think they know? needed to. I- yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not ice mines, you know. Uh, it's the, the fact and the argument is that those were very skill center map, you know. It's very standard mm-hmm. on Jaguar, only skills, you know, it's what matters. And as soon as you have, as you have the right composition and you can actually, you know, able to play, you're going to get everything. And of course, Rosfed, they got everything they could, they could in their power. And uh, we're ready for a little break right now. Uh, joining us, actually, Fawn for the next set. Yes. So, Chris, bye-bye. But I'll see you in chat. And, uh, yeah, taking a little pause right now.
And welcome back to the minor league. My name is Merlo. With me, Fawn, the legend, the man, my tech caster, the one who I'm relying for information because I don't know these teams. You know, I just came here for the short run. You know, you were here for the long one. So uh, tell me, uh, you know, about these two teams. Tell me about their story. If you see potential at this point, because we're basically on to the closing week. Well, right now we're in the North American bracket and the upper semis, if anything. So this is the Squid Squad versus uh, the Deadliest Sins. And for Squid Squad, if you guys seen him around in chat, you see him every now and again in the Paladin's game channel. Or you watch him stream. A couple of these guys are streamers. If you guys are into Paladin's content, watching more outside of the professional esports reign, uh, Apache, Longshot, Thing, um, Wizdu, Dink, these guys, they stream. They they are known for doing sort of outside Paladin's content. And names it is, I feel like the people are used to seeing uh, more than anything on Squid Squad's side. The Deadliest Sins, uh, however, if you were tuning in to last week's previous broadcast, uh, you, have a situ you have a situation where uh, the Deadliest Sins were playing in last week's bronze match. They did make third place last time. And previous to that, I... I the, these players, I, I personally don't recognize a lot of the names here, but I have seen them play before. They did bring out all of the stops to make sure that they could compete in the bronze match. They did make that third place. So I'm expecting to see the same high level play that we saw last week, this same week. Okay. Uh, we're ready basically for picks and bands for this first game. And remember, the one who wins, the team who's going to get victorious is going to have one point of advantage, basically. Uh, they're going to have one point coming up into the grand final. So very important matchup right here. And uh, let's tip the scale, you know. Let's point some fingers. Um, favorite team, you know. Who's going to win? Who's going to be the best? Oh, okay. Uh, well, Based I, on your I, information. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I, I think, personally, that uh, Squid Squad has some, some credentials under their belt. Uh, more than deadly incidents, in my opinion, because of the fact that Squid Squad has they they are not only full of familiar faces, but these guys aren't slouches either. I, I mean, they play at the highest level, whether you're in ranked or whether you are not necessarily in ranked. More on the esports side, they may not play at the highest levels in esports, but they're a lot of these guys are GM. They're they're masters level players. They're they're, they're high level. And they understand the game at a competitive enough level to want to compete in tournaments like these where you can go up against a variety of different people. Um, so personally, I, per, if you're going to ask me as a fan yeah. like, out, that outside <laughs> of the caster role, because to try just to try to try to remain biased. But if you ask me outside of this Squid Squad, uh, Squid, Squid Squad would be the one, the one team to have it. Gotcha. So they have the formation, you know, for pop stars, etc. So let's see a little bit of their meta game, of course, and what's going to get picked and banned right now. Shalane and Corvus are gone. Vivian, of course, coming in. Torvald actually, you know, making ways inside the NA scene, uh, getting banned. So that leaves us with Makoa on Jaguar, which is super dangerous, to be honest, especially now that Makoa, of course, we saw times and times again getting picked, you know, rising through the ranks of meta. Uh, but they're going to go with Janos as a first pick. And once again, a super valid, super strong first pick for Squid Squad. What about the Deadly Sin? What what can we expect right now? Well, for the most part, I would assume that since Janos was locked in first on the side of Squid Squad, that leaves some things to be determined on the side of the Deadliest Sins. I mean, we've seen a lot. We have seen Anara and Droxus get picked up first, but this patch is a little bit different. The, the Grover pick first tier is very, very obvious because of the fact that the buffs that he received are something that you have to keep in mind. It is the fact that his damage, the longer he throws those axes, the more damage it does at a longer range. Um, and it also applies to deployables and to shields now. So Grover, you have to be able to respect that. The, that could now be the new first pick that we're seeing time and time again. The nerfs that, Anar that Anara received, not really enough to put her out of the mix of tanks. But even still, that means that other characters might rise in terms of priority. But... Grover and Rom here. It's already a great dive composition and even great survivability on the side of the Deadly Ascents. Yeah, and uh, of course, you're going to pick Rom in, um, into Janos and into Khan. So that's, you know, a little bit of a risky move. But of course, yeah. uh, Grover is your big biggest counter. You still are able to actually go inside the enemy backline, you know, do a bunch of damage, do a lot of disruption. And with the Fernando, you actually have an anchor point tank. The tank can take care of business. So you're just going to have him there, you know, with Grover. They're going to have enough damage, you know, and it's going to stack up times and times again. 
with con you still have the possibility of uh, an environmental kill from time to time you know with that ultimate at your disposal androxus of course coming in so at this point the only thing it, that can basically lock in the composition for deadly sin is like a super strong flank to pair up with androxus or a uh, strong DPS like Victor, you know, something like that to just give you a lot of uh, far away potential, you know, a lot of DPS. Uh, what about a Squid Squad? What can we expect, though, from them? Well, personally, um, I, I can't imagine that they would just let the Khan solo tank. So you, you have a potential Anara to be picked uh, on the side of Squid Squad. We know Apache loves Anara. He's played that character multiple times over, and I can't imagine him in the off tank role, even though he has played in the off tank role for. But even still, they're going to go for the Atlas this time around. Not going to go for the Anara. I completely understand that. They want to make sure that ROM is locked down. And if it's not the ROM, they can deal with characters like Fernando, who has to turn his tail and run. He has to turn his shield around, leave himself more open to a lot of these situations. You, same mm. thing can be said for Androxus. The minute his nether step ends up going away, you have to deal with the Atlas damage. You have to deal with potentially getting poked down by Khan. Situations like that that are boosted already by a Genos means that you're in a little bit more trouble than you probably will want to, thanks to the verticality that Androxus has. And Bomb King being finished off here on the side of the Deadly Ascends, that's a... Uh, I, I, I like that, especially on Jack Falls, because it closes off a lot of these sort of close corridors away from Squid Squad. They can't really play into Bomb King like that. They can try, they can play around the divider, but once that cooldown's up, it's going to be hard for them to sort of fight against the Deadly Ascends. Well, we're going to find out. We're going to jump straight back into the game for this first matchup. Let's see and let's analyze a little bit of those cards. Are you seeing anything different from usual? Um, uh, Leon's shield. And, and yeah. I think that's, that's something to point out here. I mean, me and Krez have talked about this before. Um, but Leon's shield has sort of seen its way to the forefront of Khan's talent choice. We, we've typically seen Storm of Bullets. We saw Commander's Grab, a.k.a. the, vo the Vortex Grip. Uh, talent being brought for Squid Squad. Uh, not Squid Squad, but for Khan in general, just due to the stun before the resilience changes ended up happening. But seeing that Leon shield, he just wants a little bit more survivability. He wants to be able to live a little bit longer. The verticality is going to eat him alive. We have to deal with Androxus, so I definitely mm. would... I, I definitely appreciate the pick there, but already at first blood. Yeah, Squid Squad going strong right now with Koga, of course, taking the first kill. Androxus is going to be the next one, probably. And as we said before, yeah, you cannot really go into Bomb King, and we saw how much damage you can actually do. Fernando getting picked off, and uh, that's going to be a first point from Squid Squad. Very easy for them, just two kills, and they unlocked the full-on situation. EV right now trying to do a little bit of pressure onto that high ground, and I think the point is gone unless they try to take it maybe with Androxus. Or if they want to do a vine trick with, of course, Rover. Androx is actually coming in hot onto the tail of Koga. Not taking the kill, though. Yeah, it already seems like they're engaged here on the side by Statue. As Electra to see if he can bring down Dink low enough to see if he can get the kill. But Ooh. I don't know if that's actually going to matter. They're pretty much just playing ring around the rosy around the statue. But they ended up getting the kill. And I, I think that tells a, a very, very huge story about how Koga is not somebody that people pick often or used to not pick as often it's a character that you see time and time again being picked uh being, being picked in situations where they, they need that high mobility flank where they want to have that sort of presence over some of these other stronger flanks and and yeah you underestimate his damage a lot because you have situations where he just overall ends up shredding a lot of those targets that's what happened at the beginning dink gets that first blood everyone scrambling to now reposition yeah and of course also koga is a super deep potential of chasing you down and killing you in any situation of course he lacks the verticality but you know makes up by raw speed and raw survivability thanks also to that ultimate and right now we can see how much he's actually chasing down allowing the cart to fully extend to the enemy base and yeah bomb king is going to be the last one and last bastion standing actually trying to do as much dps and stun as possible drugs is coming in with the accursed arm trying to find a kill he's not gonna find anything actually getting shut down from the sky Bad situation and bad reposition for them. Uh, Deadly Sin getting penetrated right now inside the base. Uh, they're having so much problems. And Eevee actually, with Genos and the others, getting another kill. Bomb King is going to fall soon after. And I think this is actually a clean 2-0 because they got no bodies. They have maybe Fernando, but he's not going to pop an ultimate out of nowhere. He wants to keep that for the next matchup, probably. Yeah, and uh, I, I definitely think that 
this is what I was talking about beforehand. I mean, they may not have a dedicated sort of backline character to deal with the Androxus' verticality, but you still have to worry about being poked down by the con, like I mentioned, and then an amazing King Bomb as well off of the back of all of that. That's, uh, I mean, that, that's about as good as you would want. I was just talking about how it, it felt a little bit weird that the, the Androxus wasn't able to quite find its mark, but it makes sense when you have to play into a con, into an Atlas that are both being Geno's boosted. E e Eevee, Koga may not be able to deal with him as often because of the verticality. That damage fall off for Koga is going to be too much. Eevee would have to hit insane shots midair consistently enough for the Androxus to feel a little bit more uncomfortable. But, I mean, when you, when you lead things off with a King Bomb towards the tail end of that fire, I think that's, that's a great retake. Yeah, King Bomb basically unlocked the full-on situation, actually gave enough space uh, to the deadliest scene to defend. And right now, Rom actually using the rock to, you know, switch on and off that aggro. Bomb King needs to find a kill, but it's super difficult with so much verticality coming down from Eevee. Grover right there, watch out for Androxus, trying to find a kill. He just needs one last shot, but it's going to be too slow for the enemy team. And uh, there you go, right now, fighting against uh, the two main bodies, Fernando, and of course the others. Uh, from the Vortex Grip, it's not going to be enough. Of course, the overtime is going to kick in. But uh, yeah, I think it's a successful defense. And all thanks to Pixel Square, Bob, that King Bomb basically made the game. He was able to actually defend successfully. And what a great player right there. Yeah, the King Bomb definitely bought them some time to make sure they could hold on and get into a better position. It seemed like Squid Squad were being extremely aggressive. They were forcing them back towards their spawn. And you have a situation where now, when they're waiting for everybody to respawn, they had just gotten picked off on the way back to their spawn, seeing if they could try and find a better position to fight back against Squid Squad with. And when it all came down to it, Pixel Square Bob uses that King Bomb, makes sure that he gets some of the kills. The rest of his team is there now, so he can use it pretty much without fear. It maximizes on it, burns down some of their timer, they make it back, and they still get picked off in the long run, which, I mean, that's deadliest sins, just showing exactly why they were even... Okay, you, you, you can say what you want to about third place. It's It's hard to make it to even third place when you play against some of the people that you know are in the minor league, right? It, it, it's hard to do so. We've seen people like Zarini, like Simsalu, some of these guys that are just now in the minor league. Some, some of these people that we knew in the PPL last year are now coming back to participate in this. So I, I, I think it's really uh, concerning, especially to see these teams duke it out because you never know who you're going to end up playing against, but all these teams are definitely dedicated to the cause here. They they want to yeah. fight. They're, they're ready to throw hands, honestly. They definitely are up to the challenge, and uh, we saw, uh, actually, in this particular game, uh, they're holding up pretty well. They just need to find the right footing, you know? They need to find those kills, and uh, after that, you know, unlock, uh, you know, uh, situations, probably some plays, stuff like that. Right now, they're actually playing a little bit too defensively if i'm gonna be honest because they are not taking any chances they're not taking the point they're not clicking heads uh they're scared of the opposition and they're gonna lose this point fast and drops is actually ooh, getting debated by the enemy eevee and uh, we saw that you know we saw that we saw times and times that wormhole you know the capacity of blinking in and out of fights and turning heads uh, it's quite difficult you know you don't have the 360 sensibility to actually deal with that and uh, that just happened right now. Fernando's going to be the free kill. You know, he's going to get pushed back outside the point. And uh, yeah, right now, Squid Squad basically are dominating and are starting dominance. So even with the ultimates. Yeah, and, and I find it interesting that Apache did that. They didn't get the kill immediately on the Fernando. He actually pushes them back, just as you were saying before. And they don't commit to that kill. But I, I think it's fine that they did that personally because of the fact that, sure, they pushed Kalava all the way back. He used the overpower, made sure that they were out of position. That's a situation that he still can't push up and fight back against. They, they they're still have to forfeit ground, whether he died or didn't. They have accomplished their ex objective without exactly having to kill him. Yeah. That's the front of the mind that is that you need to be able to maximize on different ultimates regardless. Think outside of the box. Use them in different ways that people wouldn't quite expect them to do so. And Deadly Sin struggling on the defense once again. My god. Dink is just making plays right there. The pressure is too much to deal with. And uh, Bomb King is crying blood. He's having so so much difficulty to just getting to the fight. For him, hitting shots is arduous. Like, he's having so many problems. Uh, and uh, they're all backed up in respawn. Fernando needs to actually jump onto that point. Uh, Eevee, who taking another kill against Alec. Yeah, Andrax is also 
done for it. This 1v1 against flankers be flankers. So it's not going to be successful for him. Maybe actually turning in and out, turning heads, you know, using ice block. And it's going to be a successful push, even though uh, Rob was still alive, but he was back to the side, you know. Everybody was kind of alive, kind of potentially getting onto that point, but it was not enough. That's going to be a free one for Squid Squad. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I'm I, not sure what Dilly's Sins have to sort of do here. It seems like they're getting picked off a little bit earlier in these fights. We saw last time that Shawnee ended up using the Whirlwind to see if they could counter that engage that they were able to provide by Statue, by Secret, by Sun. There, there are fights that are breaking out all over the place around the objective in middle. He uses the world, they use the Whirlwind and see if they can keep everybody alive around them. And due to a situation like that, it doesn't pay off how he or they wanted it to. Honestly, I, I, I think it's a little bit more concerning in a situation like that where you use an ultimate and it doesn't find the value because you lose the trade just as quickly because of it. And that's exactly what happened to Deadly Ascends that last mid. They weren't quite maximizing on some of their ultimate capabilities. Right now, they still have the resources, though. They can make the play, you know, they can get onto the point, but they need to start doing some plays. They need to be more aggressive than that. And uh, they actually, they're coming in with those couple of kills. Uh, Ibi, though, dying, but Koga's still alive, actually doing a little bit of a cleanup right there. Gonna go against uh, Fernando 1v1. Oh. The yeah, there you go. Um, comeback mechanic coming in. Uh, the card is going to be captured, and uh, that's a little bit of a breeder for Deadly Sins. They need to find those skills, though. Koga right now completely uncontested, completely dominating the situation with Eevee. If you find Eevee, of course, if you have the CC, you can still try to kill her, but you don't have a reliable way to actually stop her. Outside, maybe, of when she's waiting out of an ice block. Look at that! Look at that! She's completely uncontested. There's no way you can actually deal with that. And on the long run, that's going to matter. I, I'm, I'm a little bit upset about the fact that they weren't able to touch on the side of Squid Squad. I thought that Dink had it. Maybe he should have went in a little bit earlier, but we've seen the story play out again and again on Jaguar Falls, specifically in this game. It's the fact that Deadly Ascends, they might be able to get a couple kills here and there. They gain the point that they need it. Now it's 3-2 to two instead of it being 3-1. to one. The pressure is off of them for at least another minute and 30 seconds, right? But they aren't quite able to win these engagements. What happened in the beginning of the last mid-fight? They used the, another King Bomb it paid off for him they gained control over the objective and that worked out but you can't rely on the king bomb every single time you have to play to your character strengths i mean i i, I want to see uh, androx get a little bit more aggressive but for him to be able to do that there has to be space created by different characters on deadly ascent's team and rom can't because of the amount of shutdown that they have in situations like this where apache's forced to use his commander's grab where they're forced to be out of position or a couple of them have been killed where Rom actually has the space to move to the back line and apply the pressure that they're looking for. At this point, if they want to rely so heavily on King Bomb, you know, they just need to do, you know, as much kill as possible, funnel that energy, you know, funnel that activity on uh, Bomb King himself, you know, and, you know, for the next uh, matchup, you still are going to have the ultimate. You can still rely on King Bomb to make a couple of plays and maybe you can fight for the last point, you know, free on free. Maybe something like that, but yeah, you're completely right. They need to find more pressure. Androxus cannot work if Rom does not do his job. Uh, and Rom cannot do that because it's completely countered. But at this point, also, you have Eevee, you know, just using that verticality and taking shots over and over and over inside your backline. And you don't really have a direct projectile to deal with her. So at this point, what can you do? You just have to use ultimates, play for the final point, Ooh. and hopefully use Khan at your disposal, you know, uh, kill Khan and use Fernando at your disposal to cover everybody and pile on to that point. It's going to be a free two right there, but yeah, situation did not change that much. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, if history repeats itself, which we've been seeing it do the, the past couple of points and objectives that have been fought for, off of the back of this King Bomb, Deadly Ascends, they've got a good King chance Bomb. in forcing an engagement that will be favorable for them on the side of red i mean they have all their ultimates on, uh, online there are all 10 ultimates available in the game five, five per team four, personally i think the ultimate economy here lies in the deadliest sins because we've seen how much value that king bomb has but not even that you have the immortal you have the whirlwind you have great defensive ultimates there are plenty of ways where you wouldn't end up being in a situation 
where things wouldn't just work out for you. But it seems like they want to start things off with the King Bomb, and they actually managed to find two with the through time in space. I can't believe Damn. he caught on two of them with that. That was huge, and right now, Koga actually going in, taking another one, and uh, yeah, they're completely shut off. And at this point, uh, through Jaguar Falls, uh, you, you know, it's the same deal over and over. Uh, you're going to press them back into their spawn. You still have Khan, you know, you still have Eevee uh, that can slow them off, you know, pop those mounts. Uh, at this point, Deadly Sins, they're completely all backed up, and Androx is still, you know, getting run in circles from Eevee times and times again. It's pretty much over. It's pretty much set in stone because this Eevee, once again, as I said before, completely uncontested, going in, going verticality, doing those shots, getting those kills. Look at the pressure she can actually take upon herself uh, by just, you know, rotating heads, you know, rotating the enemy uh, focus. Uh, this ROM uh, completely out of focus right there. Actually, I think the others are going to try to find another kill onto that Bonk Big King. That's a double. Coming in for Eevee, Fernando's gonna get shot down, and Grover is gonna be the next one. I yeah, don't think there's like a hope. They, no, no, the, there, yeah. there isn't, Merlo. There's no way for for the Deadliest Sins to be able to make it back to the objective and see if they can clutch that one out. It's actually gonna be Squid Squad. They're gonna be the winners of this very first map on Jaguar Falls. And I, I actually wish that we can, this is no slight to Jithans or anything at all, but I actually wish that we would have been able to actually see that through time and space because I wanted to know what quite went wrong there. They started things off with the with the King Bomb to see if it would work out for him. And then Wiz Dude just ends up getting a double kill, like almost yeah. instantly, thanks to the through time and space. They try and force an engagement there. Maybe a couple of them ended up pushing in, grouped up a little bit too much. You have a situation where you wait at just the right amount of time, right in the positioning. I can only imagine that by statue, there's only a few places that you can go by statue that would it end up with a uh, with with, double. Right, right, exactly. Like there's a lot of areas that have choke points that are there that might be able to set that up. So I, I wonder where they would have can't come through, but it doesn't matter because when you have 37 assists, you can play however the heck you actually want to. 8, 2, and 37. <laughs> 16, 7, and 13. I, I mean, the slash lines, they tell the story here for Squid Squad. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we saw many, many times how basically they did not have the right amount of focus. Deadly Ascents, of course, then Androxus, that matchup was disastrous. I I'm sorry for Elec, but right now, you know, look at the damage. It it's there, of course, but it was not enough. And each and every time he was going up against the Eevee, he was dying left and right over and over and again. Same thing for Bomb King. For Bomb King, I actually am impressed that he managed to do that much damage and that much pressure, even though he had Koga onto himself all the time, even though he had, you know, Eevee all the time onto him, trying to shut him down and trying to press him back onto the respawn. So incredible, but they need to change something inside of that composition. They need to pick more accordingly to the enemy team. So... I don't know, maybe next round they can change something, but I'm not super sure. Because especially for Androxus, came down to mechanics and skill play instead of just a bad matchup, you know? Right, exactly. But I, I also still think that a lot of that can also still be attributed to a bad matchup as well. I, I, I think the drafts that both teams had were good, but I don't think if you pair them up against each other that it worked out for them quite effectively. I mean, you have a situation where Rom is playing into multiple counters. He play, He's playing into three of them more specifically. He's playing in the Atlas, he's playing in the Khan, he's playing in the Genos. And you have a situation where the offtake and the flank have to work together. And if the offtake can't do his job, the flank has a harder time of doing that. Especially when Androxus floats around and uses his nether step to see if he can try and create the space. But he just ends up being a sitting duck because Rom can't create the space that they want him to. Yeah. But I think we're ready for the next uh, Ban and Picks phase. And uh, let's see what's going to be the next map. It's going to be Ice Mines. Okay. So um, my first week at, you know, casting the PPC, you know, doing a little bit of in and out with Kresnik, I said, Ice Mines is one of my favorite maps. And I stand by it, even though everybody is actually bound to hate this particular map because you can do pirate ship, you can basically just wait it out and stall for free on free, you know, and just try to take and steal the last match. I think this is the best shot for Deadly Sin to actually, you know, get a win. If they mm -hmm. manage to have a nice composition, it, maybe even a tanky composition, they can go and through spades, you know, they can actually take the win by just stalling the game till the last matchup, have a con, 
launch everybody, you know, and eat somebody out of space and right, get that right. environmental kill, something like that. And also, a bomb king would work, magnific- you know, in a, in a very efficient way right here, you know, tight corners, a lot of space, you can use that bomb to actually get stunned. So, I hope that Deadly Sins, you know, has the right matchup, you know, has the right pick right there, and uh, would, and I hope they're are going to be able to actually, you know, take that Makoa maybe first pick, something like that. W- what do you expect at this point from this particular squad? Because Squid Squad, they're incredible. We saw the mechanics, we saw how they play. We don't have problems with them. You know, we know they're strong AF, and they're going to be, you know, <laughs> very in meta right here. Yeah, uh, I, I, I definitely would say that in a situation like this, we, we've seen sometimes where there have been there there have been teams that actually draft blasters, whether they be Dredge, Bomb King, Drogos, whatever the case may be, and we've seen the other team without the blaster lose. But we can also say that on the flip side of things, there have been times where people have had a blaster and it hasn't quite performed how we expect it to on this map. I'm saying all that to say that anybody can pick what they want to on this map because we've pretty much seen a lot of what we would expect. We, we've seen the blasters, we've seen some of these frontliners, we've seen different picks, we've seen Tiberius more on this map than some of the other ones because of all the choke points that you have to hold on Ice Mines. A lot of the angles that the opposing team has to hold very, very heavily favors Tiberius. So it seems like the Genos, Anara, Bomb King are going to be first. Once again, I mentioned it before, Apache loves to play that Anara. He ends up picking that Anara first. Bomb King is what the DPS are going to go for this time around is, but uh, we've seen snipers be picked on this map too, and Rom, once again, this time, they sort of have a little bit of a better opportunity. I feel like, I, I honestly feel like nothing counters Rom as hard as Genos does, and I feel like that now that they have yeah. that, especially with the Strix, it makes it very, very easy. Well, I, I say that, and then they pick Grover, so Rom's still going to have a tough time anyway, but I still feel like it, it's really, really hard to, to manage that uh, against the Genos because there's very little counterplay if anything. Squid Squad right now with the super aggressive pick with Bomb King, Grover, and Ro- wait, 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 wait a second. Oh, wow. I see two ROMs. I see two ROMs. So something needs to change right there. Uh, but yeah, uh, the aggressive play with Squid Squad because Inara on Ice Mines we saw we call it the flanking Inara. That's the, the the joy of having Inara in your team on Ice Mines, particularly as soon as you clear up the point, you can do tons of damage. You know, with that wall, you can block people inside a tunnel. You can block people in high ground. You can have a cleanup crew coming in and you know get that kill soon after. So Inara actually here can play very aggressively, and it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be huge for them. Also, you have a bomb king, so you know, coupled with that wall, you also have the possibility of a stun. You know, and getting multiple people. You have king bomb, so you can unlock the situation of a kind of quote unquote pirate ship or group of people piling up onto that point. You got con for the last matchup, you know, the last round. You just take the enemy tank, you get a free point, you get a free kill, and you actually get a free match out of it since we're in Ice Mines. And also you got Fernando, and you're playing Fernando into con, so it's going to be super scary to keep that Aegis, keep that shield up. Squid Squad has the better team right now, and deadly since they're going to rely heavily on Strix being uncontested with Victor. But the map is super small, especially onto that middle point. If the right flanker or DPS at this point with Dietiberius comes up for Squid Squad, I think for Deadly Sins is over. But free to contest me, free to debate me onto this composition. Because Strix is able to do a lot of things. But the map is so little, so you know, stretched out just into the defensive and you know part. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit personally worried about the situation that we saw last time around. Rom is now in a situation where he can be very heavily countered once again. He has two different counters this time. Really, three if you want to count out the B, if you want to count the BK as well. With the grumpy bomb means that Rom can't sprint through certain areas. So I don't know. I, I, I mean, I feel like this is the same situation as before, but this time they drafted two backline DPS. That might help them out a little bit more. Definitely. And uh, we're ready to actually jump into the game right now and see uh, if these two teams will unfold into an aggressive action. Um, anything different? Uh, let's check it out together, shall we? Yeah, it seems like in terms of... Uh, hmm, in terms I'm changing of act- to Storm of Bullets. Hmm. i just noticing from last game. Sorry. No, 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 that's completely fine, because that's actually what I wanted to bring up as well, so you actually perfectly segmented that into it. It's Storm of Bullets instead of Leon's shield this time around. I, 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 
Leon Shield has value. It's a great talent for Khan nowadays, but that also does not mean that Storm of Bullets is also not viable. You you want to be able to have that for some of these extended fights. If you're pumping damage into different targets, especially like a ROM, it makes it a lot harder for him to really do much of anything. You're going to grab him. You're going to try and win these engagements one-on-one -on -one with him on the side as we see Khan doing to the left-hand side of everything. But even still, they're getting shut out thanks to this Bomb King. It's hard for to do anything. As I said, told you before, look at Inara, look how aggressive is she inside those points, because she has the Wally, she has Pump King, anything that I predicted is actually happening, because you can be that much aggressive with Inara on Ice Mines, but onto the other side, actually, a sad boy taking a couple of kills uh, with the help of uh, Genos onto his side, Strix and the others actually taking the point, and uh, yeah, right now, situation is almost half and a half, you know, 50-50, they're playing both strengths very well. Rom actually going a little bit too aggressive into the Bomb King, trying to take that kill. In our thing to be alive for now. Strix are all onto the point. They need to find him, but there's no flanker. There's no high velocity DPS catching onto him. So Strix is going to be fine for the majority of the game. Yeah, and I think uh, <laughs> I have a good reason to be concerned once again, because even though they do get that pick directly onto Grover, it does still make it hard for rom to do what he wants to he moved in and then he gets triple axe immediately there wasn't anybody to really respond with him at the time he was being dove so it makes sense but even still it's it's a little bit rough it's, 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 a, it's a little bit rough for the deadliest sins oh and in tune with everything Ooh. else but king bomb rolls right on through manages to get that stun immediately same thing for the seismic crash and they're still pushing it they're not stopping on the side of the deadliest sins yeah, and it won't stop coming, and it won't stop coming with that King Bong, but actually nothing came out of it. And uh, Deadliest Team actually got the point right now. Seems to be the comeback for them. And the Squid Squad actually having a little bit of problems. So, of course, Bomb King did not connect this time. He was actually looking and chasing out for the Victor. But uh, Victor, of course, thanks to that sprint, is going to be super fast, you know, super slippery in those cases. So they need, they basically went for the tanks. But now we're on the defense side. I'll leave you up to it, because it, there's a lot of things to discuss. This is payload is going to be slow. There's going to be a lot of defense near the boxes. It's going to take a long, long time. Yeah, it seems like the barrage gets used. They only use one charge, and then they just go ahead. Well, two charges, excuse me, and then they end up canceling that spectator bug for a little bit of a second. But even still, that cataclysm... Not going to quite find the mark they were looking for. Same thing for the two through time and space. They're fighting mm -hmm. for this high ground right here. If they lose this high ground, as you'll see, Delia Stins have to sort of back off. They have to contest them where things standing right now, where Squid Squad were sort of, were sort of posted up at. He was hoping mm -hmm. the Cataclysm would work out way better for him, but very clearly it's not. Dink with a nice yeah. double kill means that they're going to have to be forced to back on the side of the Deadliest Sins and regroup for a later fight. Cataclysm just collapsing onto the enemy team and right now they have the better spot and the better chance because you can pop those enemy mounts right here and there, you know, uh, get a huge advantage. Thanks also to, of course, uh, Dink right now, you have those protect projectiles, you know, they bounce. So even though you can get the right angle and the right shot, you can contest the enemy team without getting exposed. And there's a lot of funneling, you know, a lot of tunnels where you can do a lot of damage thanks to Tiberius. At this point, they all came back, uh, so it's time to retreat, regroup, try to stay and stick the defense into the boxes and take the high ground back again. But yeah, it's super hard to push inside this particular map. Ice Mines, you know, comes down to free on free for one particular reason. It's hard to push, it's hard to get kills, and the respawn is super close to the point. You basically just jump down and you're ready to defend. So yeah, it's going to be hard for them to actually capitalize. And we're back to 80 seconds. They just died one time. They just got wiped out one single time, and they're already losing this particular round. Sad boy, along with Pixel Square Bobber once again, pushing back up in the same area as before. This time, it seems like they have a little bit better luck this go around. They have forced them out. Now they have control over this. You see that the limited, they, that Squid Squad have very limited space to work with. They're pretty mm -hmm. much stuck either by their spawn, stuck by the staircase. You can't really push out much of anything unless you get the kill the way that Dink oh, did. Oh, 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 it oh. seems like he wants to use a blade dance and manages yes. to get the kill immediately in the back line. And there you go. Watch out, watch out, because they got the couple of kills right there. Suicide Squad, uh, Squid Squad, sorry. <laughs> Actually defending uh, in a very successful way. And of course, everybody, you know, just dying. You can just collapse onto the enemy team. This is Ice Mines. This is a slow map. And 
the better they defend, you know, the longer we actually play, the longer those cauterize are going to come up, and the longer there's a possibility for Squid Squad to just basically win tanks to con only. You know, as I stated before, you just need an ultimate, you just need to work vortex grip, and then use your ult to actually uh, block Rom, block especially Fernando, and launch him into you know into space, get that environmental kill, have a free point. So doesn't matter if they win, if they lose. As long as they as they get with an ultimate to the last matchup, they're gonna win. They're gonna win regardless. Let's see what the action is gonna take us to, because we have a king bong available, and uh, that ultimate could throw shades into the enemy backline. Actually, Fernando popping in his ultimate super early uh, doesn't like the aggression, doesn't like the pressure from the enemy team. Victor being chased down by this bomb king. Couple of shots more and he's gonna go fall down. Everybody just dying onto the Daily Sin squad and uh, they don't have much time left at this point. Well, they win by taking over Barn once again, but even still, they use a couple of, they use a couple of their own abilities, a couple of their ults to see if they can maximize on those kills. They got the kills, you know, that means that Barn is uncontested and when they make their way to it, they're gonna have a hell of a time trying to maintain and retake control over this because uh, it's hard playing without blasters in situations like this where you're just consistently getting uh -oh. pressured and then you start things off with the King Bomb once again. Victor might be the only willing participant yes. and he gets picked off. And finally, he actually got it. Uh, he was trying last time. Wasn't quite close enough, uh, but the next one could be Janos. So watch out, he's completely alone completely left by himself and it actually counts as a stagger because you know so much time for respawn so much road you have to take up to actually get get back onto that point squid squad with a 2-1 hitting the enemy team but a lot of blasting action as you said before so right now what's the possibility for their listens do they just wait it out do they use a couple of ultimates you know in the chance of actually getting them back for the last round what's the strat here fun mm. Okay, so I would say that if you're on the side of Squid Squad, for them to actually, if you're on the side of Squid Squad, you keep doing what you've been doing right now, which is maintain control over Barn. You've already captured the objective, cool. You no longer have to worry about control over Barn. Now you want to make sure that you keep control over this high ground. It gives you a lot of different angles to look at in situations like this, where people can just be dove upon very easily. Ooh. But then Dink manages to mess that one up. If you're deadly ascends, which I was about to get to, you're in a situation now where you don't really have to be concerned about much. You have to hold your ground, stand there, see if you can take as much punishment as you can from Squid Squad because you just have to hold on. You're playing tower defense at this point. If there's a situation like Dink, uh, uh, if, if there's a situation like how Dink ended up messing up a little bit of his engagement right there, that's what you want to maximize on. They maximize on it, and you see now in a situation where deadly ascends is sort of pretty much holding on making little by little headway trying to see if they can hold on by the game oh right now king bomb going in my god so much damage onto this bomb king uh, that positioning was bad he needed an angle he needed a building something to cover him up and he just went in straight up and died i don't know that was such a waste uh, for such a good player, uh, I don't know, Squid Squad, a little bit strange, to be honest. Uh, uh, they're flip-flopping this full-on offensive, uh, but that's okay. They still got plenty of time, you know, to farm those ultimates back up. They still got plenty of rounds to actually play around this. Uh, so probably they're not interested in getting that point. They're interested in maybe doing a couple of kills. Rom being picked off, though, means that they're in a situation now where they have to respect squid squad's offense and now take a defensive stance on the deadly ascends and we're back in a situation where we were before a couple of seconds ago mm -hmm. before other members of squid squad got picked and before deadly ascends managed to capitalize on dink's error we're back in the same spot that we were in before taking advantage over this high ground looking at where people are they see that sad boys there and of course he's going to end up making it out but even still they're holding on to very very good sidelines here there's not a place that deadly ascends can go that wouldn't put them in harm's way just like that victor the minute he steps around that corner he gets picked the same way apache did the fact that nobody he went down is pretty though. huge and no one else mm. can contest yeah nobody's touching though they got a great control of the sidelines i'll give you that for sure but nobody was touching nobody was contesting um i don't know why to be honest but uh we're back into a stalemate situation two on two uh 
So resources wise, I see that you know we got Khan, we got an R actually, we got yeah. King Bomb in a short while, and onto the other side we got full on defensive uh, abilities and through time and space. They could pick up a couple of you know pick up the slack, pick up a couple of kills thanks to that Genos, maybe Victor, but you know you need to also find the last straw, the last push. Uh, at least if you don't want to go to the final matchup. And that's that's the thing about Ice Mines. I said that Deadly Sins had a possibility on this map. And that's true. Give is so forgiving. You know, if you do mistakes in attack or in defense, you still got plenty of time and plenty of chances to actually come back. So uh, you either need to play extremely care careful, you know, at 100%, or you can be slacking and just go for the final point once again. Actually, in our uh, right block right there, uh, Squid Squad seems to be way more aggressive right now instead of last round. Way too. Yep, that's another okay. kill. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, if you if you end things with a, if you start things with a one for one trade and then you even maximize on a seismic crash like that, thing wants to do so and he ends up getting the kill. Because of this, that now means that they're in more of a disadvantage than before on the side of the deadliest sins. It seemed like they were able to lead things off, making sure they got that opening kill immediately onto one of the members of Squid Squad. Now you have a situation where they've lost their footing, they've lost their ground, and now members are being staggered out one after the other, just like the victor. Sure, Rom finds one, but how much more will they be able to maximize on? Hmm, I don't know how much, but Squid Squad actually capitalized. Oh my god, the Strix, the Strix! doing anything inside the matchup right now even though he has plenty of space and plenty of chances to actually pressure the enemy out but yeah squid squad is going to take at least another point and now you know comes down to the last fire you know comes down to the last push are they going to use resources to actually get the smashing victory or are they going to go for the eco round you know quote unquote eco of course you're going to be defensive you're going to use those ultimates for the next matchup etc etc at this point uh knowing and seeing squid squad i think they're going to go chill and try to cap back those ultimates that they need so that means farm up inara farm up at this point grover and khan because he actually used his ultimate and then try to you know push it through and try to win the next round because you, you basically have that base victory that I, you know, uh, cited times and times again. Um, this point defense side for Deadly Sins, the card is actually rolling pretty fast, to be honest. 1 minute 38 and they're already basically onto the last straw. A Grover actually managed to pump in a whirl whirlwind to save uh, this tuna in are actually using another ultimate. They're getting the strikes. They're just going to go in and capitalize. They're going super aggressive right there completely shutting me up i thought they were going you know full-on sleepy they were going to be defensive instead no they're using everything in their control yeah and and i i think that's a testament to the fact that they were they had so many low health bars on the side of the deadliest sins already i i mean before they even got into position we saw that same angle before they're playing high ground they're watching a bunch of different angles as well by bridge you have a situation where people are standing there you have the victor you have the strix everyone's trying to defend the side of the deadliest sins the only difference now was that everyone ate so much damage in off positions that they weren't able to hold on when they actually made it to the spot that they were supposed to be in. Oh, nobody's touching, man. Nobody's actually touching that point apart from Fernando came down just now inside those boxes, but he needs to be more careful. Fruit time is space actually coming in and getting the con kill, and everybody's gonna die soon after. So I think that's a basic reset right there. Rom, of course, taking a more of time. Oh, wait, 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 wait a second. They're terribly in, super dangerously close to actually capping. We need to pay close attention to these guys. Does this look like they're going to actually be able to roll this one in, though? I mean, they, they only have 10 seconds left. Apache would have to make his way all the way back in to see if he can touch any of them. It doesn't look like they really want to either. They want to play for the next round. They feel more confident yeah. in their ability to take the objective, but it seems like they want to move in anyway. He went for the touch anyway. And so for that being the case, that means they now not only lose their Inara, but they've gave, given them a little bit more ultimate percentage in the back pocket on the side of the Deadly Ascent. Mm -hmm. You've got four ultimates to four ults, but Seismic Crash is almost back up. Yeah, they basically gave everything up for this matchup. I don't know. That's extra credits that you don't want to give. You know, that's extra energy you don't want to have on, onto the enemy ultimate. But it's fine at this point, you know, last round, as we expected from uh, Squid Squad and Nidalist since on this particular map, as mines, 
we stand by the possibility of deadly sins to actually take the map and take the chance to win uh but i wouldn't count on that because on, on the other side they got plenty of time to actually replenish those ultimates and we got 100 percent on con easy kill 100 percent on bomb king easy kill 97 percent on an aura and she spent that to actually get those kills before so she, now they got extra credit the ulcers are back and they're ready to roll in a couple of seconds we just need to focus on this bomb king and see what's up seems like for right now though thing wants to try and force the engagement here in the back <laughs> line and victor ends up getting thanos snapped out of existence they do force out the immortal though which is what's important here they use that in the situation for him to stall on the objective and not to defend his teammates they actually force a lot of damn enough damage onto him to where fernando panics use the ultimate a little bit preemptively and now that victor just ends up getting killed now yeah. they have now they end up killing the fernando soon after that as well you don't have any ultimate that sort of holds on and stalls they use so many of them on both teams and squid still comes out on top and on the other side they just lost tiberius so at this point oh inara getting a lot of extra time everybody's gonna run circles they want to touch the point but there's nothing on rum nobody be able to actually touch the point fernando was there but he's gonna get killed soon after overtime popping in but right now squid squad complete control complete Incredible. dominance of the enemy team and they won the last round taking home this particular victory and now they got one point of advantage inside the grand finals yeah and that's that's just unlucky is how i would phrase that one for the opposing team for the deadliest sins because of the fact that this is another situation where rom tries to make it in rom tries to contest he's getting crippled he's getting commanders grabbed he's getting tossed yeah. all the way around every which way every direction this, even the four cardinal directions if 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 anything north south east and west rom can't find a way in to see if he can put pressure on him and despite all of that he has only five deaths really almost the least deaths on the team you have a situation where he tries to stall step on the objective at the very last second but he gets crippled by the grover can't really move in Sad Boy played the ROM very well despite the counters it was they had on the side of Squid Squad. Seemed like he was doing a lot more worse, but in reality, he was actually doing pretty well. I mean, the only one on his team that ended up going throughout the double digits and sucking up so much damage, 212,000 more mm. than anyone else on the team. Yeah, and across the board, you know, they're pretty much stable. Even Alec, you know, did a lot of damage getting those shots, but without a flanker, you know, a, a proper flanker, you just have, you know, Pixel as a better version at this point of uh, Alec. Victor is, uh, you know, you don't have the cleanup possibility to actually kill that Bomb King. Bomb King was super alive times and times again inside those fights. He was able to actually go in and out and, you know, uh, completely uncontested. And another thing that I saw was those Bomb King's ultimate, super risky, but from like one step, one feet. You just go there, use the ultimate, you know, you get a kill on victory, yes, but four times before that, you actually got shot down. So, I don't know, it wasn't super clean from both sides, but at that point, of course, Fernando was the one who died times and times again, without any control, without any support, and without any, any you know, things to say, he could not come back from that situation and Rom, you know, just fell with him at that point. But Fawn, I'll leave you to Kresnik because you are actually ready and uh, you will be casting as a chair one for the next matchup. So we're going to get to a little bit of a pause. Guys, don't go anywhere. Don't rush it out.
back in guys to the Palin Central Minor League. I'm Fawn and then of course joined here once again by Kresnik as we go over the final game of today in the North American final squid squad. You just saw them in the previous match. They are the ones that move up and they will have the point advantage for this final match. Yep, they're going to be going in 1-0 over Team Weimar who uh, upset actually I, I think. Uh, right. uh, what? What now? What's so funny about that word, Fawn? <laughs> it was just I, I I forgot that was their name. That, that that's all it was that I forgot. I forgot they unironically named themselves Weaver. Yeah. Don't worry. Luckily, they're changing their name next <laughs> next month. But the, for now, they still have to to do what they can to overcome Team Squid Squad, who upset them. I would say in the in the upper bracket finals, which we didn't get to see between here and there. But we managed to fight their way back through the lower bracket to get back up into these upper. Uh, the, these grand finals with Squid Squad having this advantage. And and Squid Squad, they just need two good drafts, I, I think, ag against Weimar. Weimar, they're normally looking like the best team in North America. I believe they've been pr relatively uncontested these last couple of weeks. But with Squid getting this win, that's momentum. They can ride forward, and, and we can see what they can do from there. 
Right. You, you never want to be the team that's playing with a point down. And here we are in a situation where there is a team that is playing with a point down and therefore makes it a lot harder to try and fight back against the opposing team. If anything, Squid Squad, like you said, ride that momentum. Make sure they use that first point to work out for them. I believe if I heard correctly that we actually have the picks and bands ready so we can go ahead and head right into that. Thank you, Justice, for confirming that. Now we are here. Once again, Squid Squad being up a point. So they have time to sort of just chill out, see if they can work some kinks out, if there's anything that they're not used to fighting against Team Weimer. But Bright Marsh is the map that we're going to, and I'm not surprised by that at all, mm -hmm. not in the slightest. Yeah, Bright, I mean, pretty much obviously always going to be standard, and definitely teams want to get the most out of it before it's taken out of the rotation in the following month. Genos, though, the first band by Team Weimer, they are first pick. They could have gotten it themselves, but mm -hmm. makes sense, I think, just to play without it in the game if you don't want to deal with those pockets if you're comfortable without that style of gameplay and squid squad agree they also get rid of the tour vault just to have a little bit less kind of hard focus on one dps and and let the rest of the game uh be maybe in more in the hands of the tanks and yeah, just grover banned away on the side of team weimer while tour vault like you mentioned just mentioned it's now in squid squad's band column they have the final band to pick here the fourth character and it's going to be vivian torval vivian gone genos grover now also gone which means that corvus is left open they don't really seem to feel threatened by that but even at the same time do you feel like weimer wants to lock in corvus first here oh uh, the answer no. Is no. <laughs> no, <laughs> the answer is no i i don't know what's making me feel this way fawn but i I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna say no i think they're gonna avoid it maybe go for a pick like rom or something that lets them say aggressive this is a callback to Michael, right? This is a callback to Speaker Lobster. Look, a couple months ago, this team doing something very similar, but giving up the Corvus, I think, might be a mistake. I feel like they can play super aggressive into this Corvus and make that up. But remember what they banned every single game back when they were Team Michael? It was Atlas. Atlas was the problem. The deja vu, the setback, the thing that slows down the dive and stalls them out. Squid Squad picking that up, I think, very smart by them and could make things a lot more difficult for Team Weimer, but now they have Ying, maybe, with that Illusor Rift to back up that dive a little bit more. Yeah, and that definitely makes it a little bit harder to fight against some Squid Squad's uh... side. That's Rom, Ash, Ying. Not only do you have what, see, what will feel like infinite survivability when she has that Illusory Rift up, you now have consistent dive potential from both of those off tanks. That tells me, obviously, as we've seen double off tank be brought in before, these dive comps means that they say, forget the objective, and we're just going to go for the fight here. Squid Squad, Corvus, Atlas, Koga, so far. That's interesting to be able to see that. That, that might mean that they they draft something that's a little bit more counterintuitive to what Weimer have already set up. And that's what it seems like it's going to be. Shut down that ROM and Ash, too, actually. They actually both work out for both of the off yeah. tanks that they drafted on the side of Weimer. Really hard to dive a single member yeah. of Squid Squad right now, other than the Corvus. That's really the, the 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 easier one to handle. But of course, Atlas and Khan are going to be in the way, and Squid Squad are going to be playing pretty much on top of each other to make this a little bit harder for them. Potentially, Weimer though they grab one of their strong backline DPSs, Cassie, great into Koga. If you can catch him between dashes, that burst damage definitely works. And we're going to see a straight up just triple tank dive. We love you love to see it. They just have to do this in the right place at the right time. If they yeah. mistime anything even slightly, if they get set back, if they get grabbed, things are going to be very difficult. Now they're going to also have to deal with a Bomb King with all that AoE damage, with the Poppy Bombs, with the Grumpy Bombs. Basically a world of CC for, for Weimer to get through. I don't know how I feel with Weimer playing into Squid Squad's comp right now. I, I, I don't think, personally, I don't believe the triple front line was sort of mm -hmm. the way to go here but even still i mean you, you've got that strong dive potential it's just playing into that bomb king that makes it a little bit more concerning but of course that's everything written down on paper let's head right into the game and see how things are going to fare for both of these teams looks like anything stands out at least for the most part in terms of talents though yeah nothing too nothing too shocking i would say here chain reaction actually maybe one just for dealing with the tanks but i feel like you're not gonna get that much of a stack before you get collapsed on unless you're kind of countering a snowball at that point and you're you're already gotten a few of them out but well, i guess it makes sense accelerant even maybe could have been an interesting pickup but definitely not worth losing that damage or that extra bit of aoe team weimer now rolling out with this triple tank and Okay, I was going to say, there's no way they're just going to pirates with this, right? They're yeah. not. They're already kind of shooting different targets, actually. No dink, just getting chased out early. 
Yeah, it seems like they're looking for the potential pick here. They do find it. Toa finds one kill onto the Koga. They managed to trade things out though by taking care of that ROM. They've gained more percentage on the side of Weimer than Squid Squad has at all. They haven't quite made it onto the objective here because they're just trying to poke into Ash as best as they possibly can. They at least force her off of the point. Either they can now try and gain some percentage for themselves or if they just opt to go for the engage overall. Rom's already back in the fray, running right on through. Trying to see what he can find here. They're finding plenty of damage plugged into Rom. They get the kill, but Merc's back on point. That gave him enough time to heal, get healed by Ying, and then make it right back onto the objective. And look at this hard dive onto Merc the Battering Ram. We'll keep him up for just a second, but the AoE over that shield too much for them to really deal with. And Squid Squad retake this objective. I really don't love how... Weimer handled that. I think the ROM running in alone was really tough, and now they're staggering out with this aggressive push while they're losing cap time. This retake's gonna be so difficult, especially if Bon Scott gets caught out. Ding's putting a lot of pressure on them with the Koga as well. He's picking up the kills that were left behind, but even still, he's getting adding more kills to the bank of credits that I'm sure he is rolling in right now on this five streak. He has plenty of opportunities to find more more kills, but Weimer have now made their way back to the objective. King Bomb rolls through, goes for the back line, see if they can do it. They hit the illusion and still manage to get the stun. Bagel blinks out in the nick of time, though. Doesn't actually get killed. Toa peeks right back around the corner, gets the kill, but Squid Squad, while that engagement was happening, managed to capture the objective. They, they make it work there near the end, even though they narrowly almost kept things going here. But look at this. Look at this pressure right now from this Atlas. I love having this this kind of control from it these tanks need to be more together triple tank dive the whole point of it is that you're getting three tank health bars in the fight at the same time but they're just taking it so staggered fun one kill as the master seeing people try to escape out of this situation he does make it out and then merc takes his place he's if you can put a stall on koga so far toy goes down almost instantly meaning that dink now wants to move in find the kill thing finds his last hit and tries to poppy bomb ash off the side they managed to at least get the Koga here. That's at least one kill, but they've already lost two members. They might even lose more than that since no one else can really escape up into the high ground. They lose Bagel Wow, their healer, down. That means that the tanks have to sort of just sit back and vibe as best as they can to see if they can hold on. Scout goes out. They've been looking for a better opportunity. The position themselves sets up a little bit too far and gets almost overpowered instantly. Mm -hmm. Now you have a situation where you have to be even more careful. Hexfire available to him, and that's why I mentioned it. He wants to use it. It manages to catch him out in the back line, but even still, they trade two for, well, really one for three. Yeah, a, a great trade, I, I think, for Squid near the end. Things not there, but doesn't need to be in this setback. Will potentially seal the deal as if just okay. barely can't make it in time. That Atlas CC, uh, fantastic in, in all situations here, especially without resilience really being available yet. For Team Weimer being so early in the game and Squid, I mean, the, the tanks that we were talking about, how good they're going to be into this dive composition, are doing a fantastic job. Fancy 4 0, Apache 1 0, both, uh, I think, keeping themselves going uh, fantastically into this dive. And Team Weimer, the thing is, they can't necessarily be fully together, right? If they all go at the same time, they're just going to get triple setback. Uh, if they, they, they can't collapse on the same thing with these tanks in the way, but they also can't do what they're doing now, which is going alone. You, you see, Vaughn going in, trying to get a one for two. You see Merc playing a little slower, but Asif is the one really committing for that for that 1v3, 1v2, and the team is never able to move fast enough to collapse on it because of these tanks that are putting themselves in the way on the other side. Yeah, already a 2-0 for Squid Squad. And that now they have to find a better opportunity for Weimer to see if they can start things off right this time. It seems like they have. They take out Thing. And Wiz dude soon after that, Commander's grab, goes out, manages to grab Cassie, but even still, they're not going to be able to find that pick instantly. They do find it eventually, and it still ends with Weimer winning this engagement overall. Squid Squad, they find one, but they don't find the opportunity to capitalize on their advantage for even a little bit. They got 30%, but Weimer are now leaps and bounds above them, and with comeback mechanic, they have to find a way back onto the point. They have the King Bomb and maybe you get oh. in, but actually use it right away to stop the Assert Dominance, but they can't stop oh. it fully, and Thing's getting so much pressure on him. I actually thought that the King Bomb was actually going to be able to stop Merc enough to where they would have to be more concerned about that Assert Dominance hitting, or about, excuse me, Merc dying in midair. If anything, they use the setback, they use the Illusory Rift, and they still find that kill. One for one trade, Squid Squad, still on the objective here, looking for a better opportunity for themselves. See if it works out for him. Tosses out the bombs multiple times. Sticks Bagel twice. Manages to find the kill. Two for Dink. One for Wiz, dude. 
but a potential point conversion as well. 66% as Asdiv now has to make it on. But if he dies here, which he definitely will, you have a situation now where it's going to be even harder for them to try and retake control over this Merc. Might get body blocked by Dink, if anything. Batoa and the rest of them make it on. They still are led like lambs to the slaughter as they find kill after kill. Hexafire burns down one, but you can't say the same about the rest of the team. Squid Squad with a 2-0 already over time being a factor. Bagel can't do much else as he gets set back and the point is captured already for a 3-0. And the, the, the Koga is playing. The role of Dink right now is almost like old school Master of Arms Koga, where he's just yeah. he's just constantly shooting. He's cleaning up these kills while also putting great damage. But Toa catches him in that crack in the opening there. And now Weimar is getting very aggressive. Apache can't even stay with his own team. He tries to move in. See if we can find better opportunities for Toa to find another kill. But it seems like his teammates is cleaning up most of what he might be able to achieve here. Kinetic Burst gets brought back. Apache putting up the shield, not gonna be able to live for very much longer. Manages to combat, roll their way backwards and out of the fray. Don't wanna get caught out by any other oncoming teammates on the side of Squid Squad. As <gasps> Cataclysm gets used, what? that could've been huge, but the Divider gets put out. They stop the Cataclysm in its tracks, and this is the turnaround they needed. They not only find one, but they find two. They'll find the rest of them as well, as they've now hit the gas pedal deep with a double kill. Bagel in the back, trying to stall on the point. Triple kill for Deek. Impersonation finds one of them. Will he find the second one? He does. He actually manages to kill two of them. And that means that two of them are now down. Weimer have the advantage here because they'll be right back into the fight immediately. And they should go fast, I, I think, here. They should definitely push them off this point as soon as possible. They have the scout also to make sure no one's hiding. And two ultimates being spent, but actually the overpower catches Toa on the other side too. It seems like we've already managed to find two of them on Squid Squad's re retake of the objective here. Tropic Breach dropped directly on the objective, meaning that they have to sort of concede this for a little bit. However, Impersonation wants to find some last hits. Some already low targets. They find another kill on the Merc. Impersonation in the back. Going to hold on to the Hexafire of anything I would imagine. As they are brought down pretty low, this means they have a better chance at stopping Squid Squad from pushing this any further. But they get healed right back up instantly thanks to the Corvus and still keep plenty of pressure on the opposing side here, despite the fact they had low health pools for only a few seconds. Merc goes in, finds the finds the way to actually use the Sir, Sir Dominus, tries to maximize on it. Set back gets used, but it's not gonna mean much because of the resilience. So he gets taken down. Impersonation is following soon after that, but make sure he gets a kill as well. But even still, Squid Squad coming out on top. Merc end up using the Assert Dominus. Vega Wild, he can't really contest at all. There's now a situation where Squid Squad can now roll in the cart. The Exile is ready to be popped, looking for an opportunity to stop anyone. And the minute that Toa comes out of that, he's gonna get blown up and pretty much sent to the abyss of anything. Rom tries to see if he can stop them in their tracks. Impersonation finds two thanks to the Hexafire. Will they find another? They actually managed to at least get one on the side of Squid Squad. There's so many low health pools here. He's running through Rom, looking for an opportunity to see if he can kill anyone that might still be remaining. The setback, once again, they're still alive. Apache with the battle shout to see if he can keep himself in the fight here. Tries to touch, but dies before he can make it there. And a three to one already for Weimer. The thing is, Weimer used a lot of ultimates and actually didn't get a ton out of it. I mean, that Hexafire, that Cataclysm, both kind of hitting effectively nothing, even with, with, with Bon Scott on this Ruckus. Performing, actually, he's the one cleaning up everything, it seems, for them so far. But they're down on a lot. They're really only going to have this illusory rift for this mid-fight uh, with a King Bomb and an Overpower potentially waiting for them on the other side. It's going to be, I, I think, scary to go into. But th this Koga, I feel, is just so enabled on the side of Squid Combine that Corvus pocket even after the nerfs to Grand Design. Uh, just the fact that he gets that extra bit of speed, he gets that extra bit of life steal that gets boosted potentially by Trigger Happy if he is running that in the build. Squid Squad's draft is just fantastic into uh, what team Weaver have, especially with if he's just farming these tanks, if he's getting all that extra energy, it's even harder to take him down. And Toa now trying to fight three players alone is going to have to give a bit of that ground up. 11% already for Weimer, but the more telling story is this engagement here on the saw. This thing was brought down pretty low, and Tra Tropic Breach gets dropped in the apartment, seeing if they can find. They find one. Will they be able to find Impersonation? He dives in, manages to catch out Wiz, dude, but even still, you find plenty of opportunities to find more and more kills from both teams. He's even kinetic oh, no. first, but he's with the movement, moving in and out between the divider. He's going to be able to live with no HP. And managed to capitalize on that one. Dink wants to move in. Looks at Bagel Wow. Use the ultimate as well. They're able to stall things out for even a little bit for a fraction of a second. 
a split squad now retake control over the percentage game and keep on piling it up. And the tanks are a little split right now. Merc, both the uh, Rom and Ash are in front, but waiting for Bon Scott to maybe get aggressive in the back. Here comes the dive together, but the Cataclysm completely whiffs. Already they move back into as the master in the background. They use the cataclysm like you said, but it's not going to find quite what he was looking for. He at least is able to find a kill as if manages to find one. Bagel finds two, but they're talking about a three on two right now as no one else can really touch on the side of Squid Squad. They have the comeback mechanic available to them. Four percent each tick. They have to find a way back on. They haven't been able to kill Dink. They haven't been able to kill Wizdu, but they have to find a way to touch right now, and they do. They stall out for a little bit longer. Dink, Koga, makes sure he can actually weave in and out of the objective here as now the rest of his tanks, his teammates have come back. Impersonation pops the Hexafire, sees if he can make the bodies drop. If anything, he finds one. He finds another. Thanks to Active Master, manages to clean that one up there, looking for multiple opportunities. The smoke is all over the place. Dink. They want the hands. Whoa. They want to toss them out. But Dink is moving in and out of the point. Look at this man, absolutely the entropic breach. They managed to retake control over the objective. They force out the they force out the illusory rift as well. They get the overpower on run and they take the match squid squad off the back of what seemed to be nothing. Managed to catch this one as an easy dub on Bright Marsh. Just <laughs> that was uh, they just couldn't kill the Koga. He just kept getting those resets, the pockets from the Corvus. That was absolutely absurd and this is why koga i mean he's winning a lot in the in the european ppc he's working it out in the NAPCML. he's <laughs> just surviving everything he's got the deft hands to keep the energy recharging literally as you were talking i was like let me make a comment about the claws really quick and hey you want to know why you don't use the claws because if you pulled up those claws for one <laughs> millisecond during that fight you bet he was not going to survive one more second. The oh, regen man. from the energy, the shadow step, everything keeping him up, getting another cyclone strike, a unreal end game play by Dink and Wisdom. Wow, dude. <laughs> Never turn your backs, honestly. Never give up in, a, in, in an objective fight like that. And that goes to show exactly how much everything meant. There were literally only two of them left. Dink, Wisdu, the dynamic duo. 34 assists for Wisdu, 23 for Dink, 21 kills for Dink as well. Managing to hold on so much available to them. That that that's that's exactly what you want to be able to see, dude. That's that's the yeah. type of stuff you love to see. Five and ten for Merc, six and twelve for Asdiv, two and six for Bagel. They don't have the slash lines that they may have wanted this match, but they still got plenty of time. But they only have they they have one more chance to make it work out for them since they were already playing up one thanks to the thanks to them winning beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and being being in this position makes things tough for Weimer. I, I said, good need need two drafts, just two good drafts to to make it happen. But they now they only need one. They made this one work a uh, hundred percent. It was a a fantastic uh, draft by them on this map. They clearly were comfortable here on on Bright Marsh, and now they're gonna have to at least find one more on another map, right? If they can just get it going but now weimer should have the next choice of map and we'll see if they can figure out what to do on this one yeah already in a situation where we're back into the picks and bands once again i i mean i i don't <laughs> that's that's a tilter if anything that's what i will call that one last match I, I i mean you had the opportunity to see if you can try and kill them you couldn't put the stop on them they dropped the ultimate on point what do you do this time like what do you do you feel like it was their draft do you feel like it just didn't work out that well for them like, was it their draft or was it just their play style overall do you feel like we could see a repeat of this on jag i i really think they kind of played into counters they didn't need to necessarily i think mm -hmm. grabbing giving them atlas giving them the con giving them all this stuff that kind of counters them made things maybe a little bit harder than they needed to be and i'd like to see maybe some more planned ahead of time draft here coming up from them lex now the first banned by squid here on jaguar falls interesting choice i think lex of course we know how impactful he can be this patch but we still haven't seen him really used that much yet i i feel i thought we'd see him a lot more considering how strong he was seeming and after a huge mobility buff and a consistency buff to the retribution he's now in the ban column but still hasn't really shown himself in the actual game yeah this was interesting is getting rid of that Lex. <laughs> I, I mean, we've seen him be brought out on Jaguar Falls. That retribution is going to be a lot, but it's it's the RNG. We've talked about it so many times mm -hmm. 
that really falls flat in terms of Lex. But I, I'm 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 not I'm not too sure. I, I don't think I personally agree with the ban of Lex on the side of Squid Squad. But hey, when well, you're up 2-0, you, you can you can ban whatever you want to. It don't really matter, and that leaves Torvald open, which makes me a little bit more concerned. Which means that they have to sort of stop. They they have to sort of stop the Koga Pocket. We've seen this before when yeah. Gogurt brought it out beforehand on Bright Marsh on the map previous. Uh, a, 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 a while ago during the PPC or d during during the PCMO. Uh, that's something you have to be scared of. Yeah, I mean, Koga can do actually pretty well into the Torvald too if they get Wrecker. Vivian, of, of course, I think if you want to play a little bit of a slower game, Wrecker on that Vivian that's well protected can make things a lot harder for the Torvald because Torvald, if, if things stalemate, he's not really doing anywhere near as much as he is if the pace of the game is a little bit faster, whether he's the one enabling flanks to dive or he is the one saving his teammates from the dive. But a little bit of a mix right now here from Team Weimer Rom. We know he wants to get aggressive. Vivian uh, moves fast, but not as fast as previous patches, but maybe right. can't do quite as much here in Squid Squad. Get Grover, so they are going full anti-dive. And I think Weimer have to adapt because they are playing right into the hands of this, of this anti-dive composition as... I need to move my curtains because, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> I seem to have a slight issue here with the New Hampshire sun at, <laughs> at 2 p.m. Solar flare. Uh, if, if, if anything, I would say Torvald, Grover, Bomb King. You've got a good look so far. Vivian, Rom, Maldamba. I, I, I like both of these drafts already. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Only thing it is, is okay. there's the Makoa. This is it. You don't ban either the Torvald or the Makoa. You're going to see one or both of them available in the game. That shell spin, we talked about it yesterday, about how prominent that buff is to shell spin on Makoa. And that might play a huge factor here. That not only will you be able to misposition some of these squishier targets, but you might even be able to burst them. That might be huge and yeah. even pick Terminus into it. Why? I don't I mean, know. I, 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 I literally don't know. Makoa was the last pick. Inara's still fine. You could play Inara with yep. your Grover. I get Inara and Torvald maybe a little bit slow, but... The running term is maybe just for peel, but your the, the the chance of just getting hooked is pretty high. Weimer is going to have that level of execution, and as soon as your siphon's down, if Vivian's shooting at you, you're pretty much dead. Eevee though picked up here, and Torvald is going to make things a lot harder for this Eevee if the Eevee kind of has to play off of whatever lane that the Torvald is in. Eevee also splits the terminus uh, a little bit, so I like this from Team Weimer. I think it's going to be a lot harder to play this terminus now with these last two picks that Weimer got. Yeah, it already seems like this is a this is a good look so far to start things off 2-0. But will this be the fall of but will this be the fall of Squid Squad? Let's head right into the game and see if Weimer are going to play this composition how we suspected them to. I'm concerned for the terminus, Chris Nick. I, I'm I'm not sure why they picked the term either. Hook goes through Siphon. That's going to be just as hard for him to even try and manage, especially with Shatterfall. Seeing the crush being picked makes me say. I, it must be just to deal with the Vivian, but I, I, I don't know if you can. Once Koa has been picked, right. I think Koa maybe had to go a little bit earlier I into that spot instead. Leviathan, though, want to make a quick note. Levy is being played instead of Half Shell, so we're going to see obviously a more aggressive look from this Makoa. I've had good luck with Re Levy and ranked, and you can still get away with that. But again, the Torbo Bubble maybe I saves them until the Rom comes linebacker and in. You blink for a couple seconds, and Merc and asked if they've already found themselves two kills, unless. Then a minute 30, only a minute and 10 seconds has passed. Most of that time being spent in spawn. And who knew you are going to get sent right back a couple of seconds <laughs> later, if anything. 30% for Weimer to nine. A squid squad now have to find a way out of their base. And this is exactly what we were worried about. We, we didn't feel like the comp really had such an impact this go around. But it seems like it has no problem or bearing whatsoever on Team Weimer. 81%. They won't be able to make it back. Everyone's dismounted, and then they have to look for the kills to see if they can get a zone on the way back to the objective. With all the dismounts, with all the tanks being in the way, the suicide zone ends up working perfectly, even after they lose two different players at once here. But pillars are still being held by them. They can't be too unhappy about that. But this hook being down could actually just be a call to push right now, Merc. Getting dangerously low, but so dangerously low, he's dead. Dink got the flank there as well, and now it's a five versus four, and Weimer have to find a way to respond. Yeah, and it already seems like that Squid Squad are at least able to push Weimer back on a potential objective capture. 
And even though the cart rolls a little bit more forward, they aren't quite able to cement themselves back on the retake yet. Makoa wants to try and see if he can lead the charge, though, but eats so much of that damage into his shield already. Tosses out multiple bombs. Thing trying to find damage spread out on different targets as they push right on in. Poppy bombs himself in a worse off spot, but misses the hook. And that's going to be pretty huge, especially since Makoa is now in a bad off spot. He's now in a worse spot than before. Impersonation finds the kill almost instantly onto Thing. They trade things out one for one. Dink at least manages to find the kill onto the Makoa. They've now lost two members in total in the game. Make that a third one as now the Squid Squad defense is faltering slowly but surely. Goes up, comes right back down thanks to the Shatterfall and manages to get the stun directly onto the ROM. They use the Whirlwind just to make sure they can counter out the engagement for Weimer as they now move in. Eevee gets the shot, blinks right back out and now in a better off spot. It's hard for Squid Squad to hold on to this one. They had a, I think, a pretty solid... Look at this Cataclysm, actually. I think Apache wasn't expecting it to hit him, so it gets dangerously low. But now they're running in, baiting the Nullify early, but Merc's getting low in the back. Doesn't matter, though. Dink gets, uh, Dink gets caught out. Oh, here we go. If anything, they managed to find a good kill thanks to the Torvald ultimate. They're able to find a couple more thanks to the silence as now Makoa gets taken out of the fray. Next one to die is Bagel Wow. And, and then the cart is as close as can be, I believe to being converted, but it's gonna slowly make its way back now that no one is on the cart to see if they can convert this point. 20 seconds remaining, tossing out so many different bombs. Doesn't even matter if he hits them. He just needs to try to even get the zone. Lay Evie blinks in and then <laughs> Evie blinks in, then blinks right back out. But by the time she blinked out, she was already dead. So that's unlucky for her. Silence is the ROM as he now has to get deal with a situation where now he can't escape. That sprint gets halted thanks to Torvald, and they make it their way back onto the objective Weimer. They are now back there, at least on the cart, trying to stall. They've caused overtime, but there's nothing else available to them. It seems like Squid Squad are going to be able to hold on to this one as they now not only take care of the rest of the team on the side of Weimer, but also make sure that they capitalize on their defense. I think Weimer was a little impatient. I think they could have waited till a later time to actually go in. They forced out the Hyper Beam last time they went. I think if they had gone near OT, maybe they could have made Squid Squad panic a little bit. But I think they just rushed it a little bit too much. Uh, spending the Cataclysm early, having asked if try to delay like ahead of everybody when they couldn't really make that gap. They don't have great poke on their side, so they have to be able to move together and kind of brawl things out here. But now they have to worry about quite a few ultimates. If I'm on Team Weimer, I'm wanting to throw my Makoa at least vaguely in front of that Bomb King, just so I can absorb the King Bomb with my Ancient Rage and deny the effectiveness that that ultimate could potentially have, especially given a Torvald bubble to speed it up like we're about to see. And already, here we go. They want to force the engagement in the back line. They find two of them yeah. as well. So there's out. And Begawau does manage to make the escape here, but even still, he gets pulled right back into the fray. Thing tries to escape with this poppy bomb of himself. Can't get as lucky as that Meltomba though. Slithers out at the perfect time and manages to make his grand escape here as they now try and force their spy secret. They used, decided that they use the whirlwind to see if they can keep him alive for a little bit longer as they manage to find the kill on the tail end of that ultimate toy. Links right back onto the objective, gets bursted down and now has to retreat. Merc planning lots of damage into Deacon. They find the finishing kill based off of that Apache for an opportunity to see if he can kill Toa. He manages to find it eventually, but he's gonna use that res almost instantly, puts up the shield, but he now has to put up the siphon as well. Gets hooked almost instantly, and they're gonna be able to find plenty of damage into that. They have to back off the peel for, they have to back off to peel, to peel, excuse me, for their Vivian, and it's working out for him, but Apache's still alive, and the rest of his team on Squid Squad are able to move in, but they still find two off the tail end of it. And they have a, everybody's turning around for this. I don't know if Toa's going to live this. The hook actually saves him, and everyone manages to peel back. Four, but they're giving up some cap time. It looks like Merc has to be the one to run in, but you can't stop this Vivian. Look at this Torvald just desperately <laughs> trying. Doesn't even have the ammo to do it. Yeah, it seems like already that Torvald is going to be taken out of the fray here. 96% to 63. As now Weimer are in a very, very huge control, if anything. As Deke gets the last hit all the way in the back line. King Bomb goes out, but a perfect ice block to make sure he doesn't go down with the King. And he's actually going to just end up taking him out of there as there's now two to one on Jaguar Falls. 
gotta stay uh, as aggressive as they as they can if they want to keep up this pressure. They just have to save Bon Scott, who does end up falling. Look at this damage though, actually onto this Eevee. And uh, once they lose their tank, they gotta go. But the roots are too much for Merc to be able to escape. Alt wise, I, I I want Weimer to actually be able to clean up. I think on what they started. There was an earlier moment where Toe blinked in and and spent a a ice storm in the back line and then blinked out, but no one else was able to be there for it. I want these alts to actually be followed up on. They need to be thinking more about who they're going to be stopping with it as opposed to just saying, oh, this is huge, and then the team's not really there to, to capitalize. Yeah, it seems like for the most part right now that we are more than halfway to confirming this objective. The second time they've been able to capture this point, they want to see if they can move in the this back line. I mean. They really have been able to take care of Toei might be able to take out more than that. Merc finds himself a double kill, but Apache all the way in the back once again manages to see if he can get some damage on the Merc. He finds the damage, but doesn't find the kill. He might be in a worse off spot than he intended here. He should try and find a way back. Slowly inching his way backwards, if anything. They find the shot around the corner thanks to impersonation, but even still, they aren't quite able to capitalize on it. Squid Squad are ready for the defense. They're all grouped up and ready to go. Look at this ground they're starting to take right now. The ROM is actually kind of forward in secret, but they have to catch somebody out, but they can. They're just standing so close together on the side of Squid. Just catch the first person to get aggressive or just hook that Terminus, but the damage wasn't there. The bubble was instead, and it ends up being a, a not Ooh, for nice. not, but they finally catch Merc. They actually managed to take care of the Vivian. Now they're down one, man. They're down two as well as they get disengaged bolted off of the objective, and now they have to run with their tail between their legs, but can they make it out in time? Doesn't seem like that's the case. A full on team wipe, if anything, as everyone is sent back to the spawn doors and now has to make their way back to the objective here. Don't really know if they're going to eat too much damage on the way in. Not too sure. They've got 20 seconds, but they've got time. I'm more so concerned about how much damage they'll take on the way in. They just got to go together. You can see Azdef is already ready to go secret. They can wait out this grumpy bomb. Merc doesn't need to get forward for it. And as soon as the tanks go, he needs to start walking. But going a little bit early, no tank in front of him. Quashi does oh, get here, and Azdef is actually already making a lot of space. They already took a lot of damage, too. They got the Cripple Axe directly onto the Makoa, and they don't find that kill, but they do find uh, that push, if anything. It's going to be pushed right off of the edge of the map once again. Hard to play around that angle, honestly. Especially with a Torvald on the opposing team over time. Of course, now I factor that there's no more time on the clock remaining. Try to see if they can make it there, but they can't. Two for two tie already. The squid Squad, they're going to try their best to hold on here. Shout out to Wiz Dude for being undying these last two kind of really stalemate rounds, doing a great job on this Grover. And I believe actually rotating to the Grover, I think Wiz normally not on this support role. I believe it's Turkle time. I, <laughs> I, I, I believe that's how you say that person's name, but Wiz shifting over and I think doing a great job so far here on, on this Grover. But I, what, what I want... I think Merc needs to play a little bit more careful with his shields on Team Weimer. I think the fact that he's spending it when he knows the Terminus is going to be trying to get onto him, I, I think let Qua like you saw what happened. He pushed a little bit, used the shield to poke, then Bond rotates over to tank. I think hold, wait for Bond to get there. As soon as Bond goes ahead, he can push behind him, not need to use the shield. If you shield in front of a Terminus, he's not doing anything to you once he's spent that crush. Seems like already that Apache is being brought extremely low. They use the whirlwind, see if they can keep him alive, but they actually use it all for naught. If anything, he's not going to use the res. Definitely need to use it a little bit sooner if he wanted to keep his tank in the fight, but 42% for Squid Squad already. As things are going awry, it's really just crumbling the Squid Squad's defense right now as they have to try and find a way out. The minute he gets pulled in, they drop the Ice Storm as well. And Apache eats a good amount of damage in the long run. He manages to at least take out Merc in the back line, but they still have to answer Rom all the way in their back line. They find another kill, which is a great look for them. As the Master now has to find a way out of this battle, but he can't. 54% to 48 at Squid Squad. They're trying their best to really hold on here. Weimer capturing every single objective up until this point. It's the first time that Squid Squad have looked in control on this map. And Squid, they have a decent ultimate for it. I mean, Rihanna made on the point. Gonna be very hard to retake it, but the Dread Serpent will come in with Toa getting the overtime, but they need to get some kills to actually make it worth it. It seems like for the most part, as everything starts to be winding down, overtime is dwindling away. They managed to find plenty of kills and plenty of damage thanks to Squid Squad. Dink and thing. 
That sounds like a shop name almost, if anything. They, they find plenty of kills and plenty of damage. Everyone sent back to the spawn doors. The King Bomb is unfortunately wasted, but they are at least able to capture the objective. Fafan, what would you buy from Dink and Things? Uh, that sounds like a store that has plenty of trinkets in it. Like, I could probably get, like, a nice keychain from there. Uh, maybe, you know, like a bobblehead. Maybe, like, a like a, like a already mishandled Funko Pop, if anything. I, I, that's what I would assume. It's definitely, like, okay. a thrift store. A, sort of how do you mishandle a Funko Pop? B, <laughs> this, this offense right now, you can see the, the way they're playing. And I like the Torv and, uh, sorry, I like the Term and the Cassie playing on the far on the far left there but Astiff is actually buying a lot of time in main and they could actually maybe even get dove on if Toa feels aggressive enough but they just can't get away with it with how healthy the ROM is right now he needs to be full to really make the dive work it seems like for right now that things are still pay off for squid squad Merc finds one kill but they are already falling out the seams as Weimer tries to hold on to this objective in whatever way they can Merc goes down so many different people on the side of Weimer falling one after the next. This cart has not stopped on its rampage forward. It's getting there slowly but surely, gradually some might say, to its final resting point. But it seems for right now they were at least able to silence Eevee for a little bit before she is able to actually make the wormhole back. See now, unfortunately for Squid Squad, uh, hyper beaming here, not quite as good. Right. You tend to save them a lot of the time unless you really get to this last edge but now they're missing thing he's been one of the basically their primary dps and this is going to be a lot more difficult for them yeah dinkin thing he's now currently out of business as they've been sent back to their spawn doors if anything trying to make their way back to see if they can retake the objective here weimer very good engagement from them. Very good at spreading out the damage and making sure they grouped up how you were saying, Chris. Finding those individual targets as they're trying to create the space on the right-hand side and forcing the all, uh, forcing things on the already retreating members of Squid Squad, but they pick off Toei on the way in. It may not pay off much for them, but they are missing one, at least in the long run of things. King Bomb rolling through. Will it find someone? It manages to actually get Merc, but there he's not in the line of sight. He wasn't their target. The Maldamba was. They used the Dread <laughs> Serpent. They actually managed to get a very huge fear off of anything. Contesting is contesting as Weimer as they managed to find off two. A beautiful fear to turn things around, turn everything on its head, but they managed to kill off as the Master. There's two of them still alive. There's a damage dealer still there. They get hooked, pulled right on in. See if they can actually deal with the Makoa. He manages to get a two for one. Toa with the triple kill as you have a three for three tie on Jaguar Falls. Weimer. Still holding on here. What looked to be a very bad fight and very bad ending to this set turns out to be another chance for Weaver. Quick flip there near the very end. Toa cleaning up on the damage that Merc was doing. I thought Merc was going to flank, but I, yeah. I kind of liked his patience just keeping them distracted. Because he went behind, then the siphon turns, and then maybe it gets a little bit easier for Toa's damage to be stopped by Apache. So uh, the patience ends up working out, and Weaver. Maybe just need they need to go with Astiff maybe a little bit more. I feel like the fact that he's one in thirteen right now normally not the worst for an off tank like that, but kind of low on the uh, on the assist department versus Squid. They need to be able to help him out just just a little bit more here more than anything. But they all have cauterized. They all have resilience three. So the roots, the crush stuns, all the all the crowd control that Squid Squad are playing off of not going to be as effective. And it looks like Weimar are going to be playing off of maybe point control as well. Ooh, I'm worried about them grouping up in Ancient secret Rage here. Is it's going to be huge as they use the Ancient Rage to see if they can keep themselves alive, but they still find the pick as well. They want to move in, but they're grouping up so, so good on the side of Squid Squad. They force them back, uses the Hyper Beam, see if they, they, what they can find, but two kills, three kills. Merc has to see if he can try and find one, but he can't. As they're now in control of the objective, Squid Squad here and ready to play, if anything. They want to get the zone going. They want to see if they can close this one out. Very effectively, they put up the shield. Makoa already burnt it, so now they have to find a better way in. As the master, seeing if he can try and find any sort of better position the minute he needs to move in and get that touch. Can they find the damage here? They use the cataclysm on no one, but they take so much damage in the long run of things. They eat so much, and now they have to deal with Squid Squad moving in one after the other. As the master already on the objective, but a beautiful fear once again. The Dread Serpent, this is what turned the fight last time. This is what it seems like will be the turn, be able to turn the fight this time around. Ice Storm at their backs. Plenty of people on the side of Weimar in their front, and they're going to get taken out of this fight. My goodness, two good Dread Serpents, man. Holding on by a threat. He actually made it.
kill Toa off the back of that as well. Apache is there. Oh, and he's no. able to hold on for a little bit longer. They were able to get that kill. I can't believe that actually worked out for them in the way that it did. They traded things out one for one now. Now Squid Squad have made it back. They found a kill on As If Master. Who else will they be able to find the kill on? They have to make it to the objective. But Thing gets hooked in, pulled, hook, line, and sinker right into Team Weimer. As now things have sort of settled back into Weimer's court here. They're holding on by a thread. Not too much. Apache goes in, but a little bit too early. They're trying to see what they can get. They get the Cripple Axe off, but everyone's converging on Dink. It seems like Weimer are going to take this one by storm. Beautiful Dread Serpent. I'm surprised Toa died to that resurrection. I, that, that's not something you I'm see sure happen he is too. often. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. But even still off the back of that, they weren't able to capitalize on the win that Squid Squad were able to get. Yeah, I mean, triple kill to tr to die to Termult is a true combo, apparently, because he just, he, he rolled over them inside dark. They weren't ready for him, and then unfort near the very end yeah, there. I, I gotta say, though, I mean, Bagel on this Damba, the real hero here for Team Weimer, he, he literally saved that game 100%. With both of those fears, they barely held on on the last point for them, barely held on in that last mid fight for them, even after a really rough initial mid where they ran in with an Ancient Rage, didn't really follow up on it. A lot of damage soaked by Quashi that really no one was able to capitalize on whatsoever. But but looking at, at this, Wiz dude, great job not dying, but damage, the kills all happened on the DPS for Team Weimer, 30 between them actually am somehow out fragging the the ones on the side of squid squad i i i'm, I'm still going to give credit where credit is due and the pure fact that bagel allow them to retake and win two separate fights off of two very pivotal dread serpents that is mm -hmm. that is to have those back to back in two clutch situations where you need something to turn that fight that's pretty huge and very good looks on Bagel to be able to capitalize on that one. Hold on. Yes. Don't go off this screen, Jithmans. Can we talk about Torvald's damage? I, that is Most not a normal. He is se he is seven thousand behind Eevee. That that doesn't happen. How? Why does Fancy have so much damage? <laughs> I I feel like that that's kind of ridiculous. I I, I normally Torvald is like below the healers, but. He is just, he is crushing it out here. That, I just I just needed to mention that before it went away, but that is a, a staggering amount of damage, I think, for a Torvald in a game as long as that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's not, I'm glad you pointed that out, because I actually hadn't even looked at anything else. It, it, yeah. it actually, he actually did more damage than the Terminus did, I believe. If I was and both at all the tanks on the other correct. team. Yeah, both tanks he, on the other he team. He highest damage in the tank <laughs> somehow, some way. Yeah, I, I, don't really quite know what to say about that one other than i guess he's just built different let's head into the picks and pans honestly to see what they have in store for us this go around as we head right into split zone quarry okay not too bad of a map my man fancy just constructed differently constructed yeah, alternatively constructed alternatively here, <laughs> here on the i saw a whole reddit thread of those yesterday and i completely lost 99 percent <laughs> of them but squid squad losers pick they get to go to their next map they want it to be split on quarry they want to play i'm assuming something flank related high ground related and this is a map where triple dps can can really do it. it it can do it it's a great map for it they can play that high ground they can play that surround style of gameplay and they all they know is that they don't want to play into knessa whether that be merc whether that be toa they don't want to see either of them piloting that sniper and they want someone that maybe they can collapse on a little bit more maybe they can get onto a strix more consistently if they get that illuminate someone in chat says merc and keyboard is this the map i know that merc okay just got merc has swapped to mouse and keyboard now merc okay. normally a controller player but he did uh before they died played in a not merc by the way the, he played in pugs that were keyboard only so he played um quite a bit there i mean he performed fine in those he should be fine on mouse and keyboard Knessa and koga the bands for squid interesting because i don't think a single for the kogan not a single member of team weimer is on controller right now uh, Knessa, bonds on controller koga. oh never mind uh, Knessa, koga vivian torvald all in the band column for this match splitstone quarry once again is where we are heading to interesting to be able to see 
Okay. Some of these different characters that might be brought out here. Corvus, of course, is going to be picked, but that means that Weimer now have access to Genos if they so choose to actually pick this one. We might even see an Androxus here, honestly. I mean, this is definitely a map where we've seen characters with lots of verticality be able to maximize on a lot of these high up, high ground places that you see in Splitstone. And Rom Strix is how they okay. lead things off. How do you feel about this early Strix? I'm a little bit concerned about picking Strix super early into a composition that could very easily just dive onto them if they, if they so choose to do so. I think that it's a lot harder to, to dive a Strix on this map. And I think them picking a Nora Khan in response, that is pretty much... They could not be lighting a beacon that says, we are not diving you any harder than, than just first rotation in our con. I'm liking how Weimer have, have flexed this. I think maybe Squid could have gone with that Atlas uh, or uh, with a Grover with it again instead, but having a more general draft could hurt them. I feel like they've kind of been counter stratting Weimer or counter playing, excuse me, Weimer the last game. So Androxus and Genos, exactly what you were saying before, they get it pretty late in rotation, and then Squid Squad pick a Buck into the Genos. Buck, I think, is great on this map, but it's just so hard to play in, into a Genos when you get lifted right out of your leap every time, basically. Yeah, Corvus, Khan, Anara, Buck, Cassie, paired against Rom, Strix, Androxus, and Genos. Uh, definitely, um, both two good compositions, but Squid Squad seems to have a little bit more survivability on their side, honestly, and they don't really have to deal with being countered out by the Rom. They have a triple DPS on the side of Weimer, with Rom as their forefronting tank and Genos as their only healer. I actually like this a lot. We can head right into the game and see how Weimer's composition is going to end up playing out. Part of the reason why I brought up the fact that I liked it is because I, I think this is good into their team. They, they sort of want to play back. I mean, sure, you're not going to be able to poke at a buck very often, so screw it why poke at the buck why not just all dive onto him well why not make sure that he's as un uncomfortable as possible don't give them the momentum take mm -hmm. the ball into your court yeah I, I think i agree i like also uh i don't know if actually if i love the yomi unfortunately because the i'm assuming the early panel not working um we're gonna have to hold here and see if someone changes i was gonna say guillotine might be value but i i think i understand not running it into Khan and Inara in particular. Inara, of course, can use damage reduction and, and have the CC immunity for it. And also you have the, uh, the the Khan who can shout part of it and stay alive. So not anywhere near as much value here, but Quarry completely in control of Squid Squad. By the way, peep that new Corvus UI in the top left corner to see exactly who has the mark on him. Shoutouts to the dev team for that, helping us here on the broadcast significantly. Squid control the Quarry, they control the point, but I feel like Weimer's getting a lot of map control while they're holding him. Yeah, they're definitely sort of slowly pushing back. Okay, he's doing like no damage. You're gonna have to get a little bit closer than that bug to be able to stop that ROM. He's pretty much ignoring you at that point. They managed to find the first kill immediately into Dink. As Weimer, still in control of the objective here, 42% to 24. As now they've gotten that kill, they want to be a little bit more aggressive here. They want to throw the hands. They want to box as they immediately try and go for the commander's grab. Wants to try and throw them behind. See if you can get them into fidget spinners. But that's not going to work out for it. Toei's already wise into your tricks. As he's going to be able to take out one of them. The next person, person nation, is going to be able to take care of the buck as well. As they now are sitting firmly in control of the objective here. Apache has to try and make his way back onto the point. As they put up the counter for Rom. Toy does have to try and find some sort of way to escape. He does make it out. They managed to retake the objective here on the side of Squid Squad, but even still, Weimer are sitting at an even 99. Yeah, I think Weimer's draft, the way that Squid are playing this, I feel like it literally plays right into Weimer's hands. I, I think them just holding inside Quarry and capping point when you're getting surrounded by triple DPS, very difficult to play, but here we have the multiple ults coming out, Cataclysm, Accursed Ooh. Arm, and Entropic Breach, but none really connecting on anything, and as if gonna get stopped by a seismic oh. crash. The seismic crash is going to put a stop to that juggernaut as they, he's going to try and make his way out, but can't quite find it thanks to the very well placed ult by Apache over time. Of course, his reset thanks to Toei dashing right on through, but no one else can really stop him here. They can't really go for any other opportunity over time. Once again, it's now impersonation has to try, to try and find some way back onto the point. They actually managed to make it back as well as Abdiv Master manages to contest for a little bit longer. They do actually managed to make things work out here for him as Merc is bouncing in and out on the objective over time. Now, pretty much said and done, as they can't make it back onto the point. Who who could have touched in that scenario? Who who touched to cause that second overtime? 
I, I think they had the con close by, but sometimes, it, depending on how recently they touch, it'll actually run through two overtimes if both teams are kind of getting on and off. So might have just honestly happened on its own, depending right. here. But you can see right now both DPS playing inside, and Toei pauses just to type in chat double overtime. I, I actually, I, I'm gonna just on that fact. I don't actually know if the if the double OT is a bug. I think that both teams and. Now, I might be wrong about this, but I think both teams can set their own unique overtime flags. And I think that if one team gets on, one team gets off, one team gets on, one team gets off in a very close period of time, I think it will cause two overtimes in a row. Mm -hmm. I I don't think that is necessarily a bug. I, I think it is partially intended, uh, but definitely rare when that happens and it's still very difficult to to deal with when you need to hold for that long that's why sometimes it's better to get off the objective right when you know that overtime flags are set if you know it's at 99 get off let that run out and then finish the cap instead of potentially uh, harming yourself uh, by extending that just a little bit further double ot though it can extend some fights longer than maybe they need to go jithins has been absolutely baited here by dink who <laughs> gave him the absolute run around yeah. thinking the game was going to start going but squid squad <laughs> still holding defensively after that mid fight I, I, I think, I, Weemers, this is where there's Compel struggle a little yeah. bit more. Merlot has unmuted himself, and I have echoed back through, so I'm being very <laughs> careful about how I speak right now. But the the way that they're pushing it, I think their comp is going to be a lot harder to, to actually get through this choke point with. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that mindset, but it seems that Asdev might be caught out here a little bit more aggressively than intended. Toa, Dink, finding one-for-one -one trades on both frontliners on both teams. The Squid Squad have to hold on in whatever way that they can. Weimer does manage to find more and more kills in their back pocket, meaning they're going to be the ones that keep on rolling this cart forward without much of a say from either side. A Cursed Arm gets pumped pretty much into the shield of Khan as they do end up using that net shot. They find the damage there, but Weimer moves a little bit too far into the back line. Toa on, on the Zen is going to try and ult back, see if he can get that kill. Doesn't find it. Instead, finds a Buck shot to the face as both Buck and Dink Okay, the Cassie and the Buck are going to be able to find one kill a piece. Apache finds another one. Thing finds more. And that means they're going to submit themselves with a now more aggressive zone than they had before. They now have a chance to breathe and see if they can retake. I think most important thing for Team Weimer to actually break through this is going to be Merc hitting a very solid shot on someone at a range. But you can see here the way that Merc is playing. Can't really look for it. Needs the tanks to make some room for him first, but Squid Squad actually just giving it up. They're afraid of the back cap, I think, from the ROM, as if he's taking a little bit of ground is kind of threatening it right now, but they have a lot of space with all these people being backed up into a corner. You know, it seems like they're at least able to pump a lot of damage into Asda, but even still, he's being healed up, using that Soul Harvest as well to keep himself alive. Manages to use the leap. They are playing around this corner as hard as they possibly can. And they're getting bounced around, if anything. Toa moves in, finds another kill. They find two, actually. A double kill for Toa. As Dink manages to try and uneven the odds here for Squid Squad. Wizdu takes part in it. Make sure he gets that last hit on Toa as well. Because over time, the minute somebody steps off of this objective, it's going to be hard for them to make it back in time. As of eating a lot of damage here. Use the Soul Harvest. Has to use the Juggernaut. They're forcing it out of him. As he, all he's trying to do is stall right now. Manages to do that, but he runs off of the oh, objective. No. <laughs> he runs off of the objective, and now he can't stall it. So now it's a one-for-one one tie. Well, Fon, when's your, when's your album coming out, man? No idea. That was a, that was a killer. That was a, that was a bop. Thanks, dude. Here, and, and, and Squid Squad <laughs> were kind of getting bopped a little bit near the end of that defense, but just man managing to hold on, I think, with the, the utility that they had and being able to, of course, pressure as if into needing to run off. Solo Tank Khan, kind of, I'm surprised they, they're willing to run back the Khan for the third time, the sort of ROM, excuse me, for the third time in a row, because I just, I, I'm not seeing it right now. I, I, I think Four, it's been okay for them for getting two, OT touches, but his, his sustain, not there necessarily the way it needs to be, and making room with that comp a lot tougher, I think, into them. Plus, also giving Khan a little bit more all charge, which, which helps, and now, that Squid Squad have overpower, they can really play off of that. They can play on the inside here. They can look for a pull and maybe not feel as threatened by the surround that Weimer are going to be looking for. One for one tie already. As you've got a 12% to 3% differential here. Cataclysm goes out, goes down, I should say. 
as it manages to spread out, tries to find the hit, doesn't quite find anyone, and all it does is find Asdiv in a precarious position, Ooh. ends up with him being dead. That Yomi playing a very huge role into making sure that Dink can't peek those same angles again, has to reposition himself to see if he can get out. Same thing for Toa. Too many eyes looking at him. They get the overpower, but this might be what Toa wanted. He repositions himself and manages to end up getting the kill on the con. A Tropic Breach goes out, but he has to try and find a way to escape. Merc finds the pick on Wizdu. Thing finds the pick on Impersonation. And now you have Dink trying to retreat. Doesn't want to get picked out, but just barely manages to escape there as Merc manages to catch the tail end of his, of his back. As Dink moves out of Mineshaft. Thing finds another pick, 51% to 39%. As you have as the master still in control of this mid here just playing it slow trying to see if he can get more damage onto the enemy team but the seismic crash for really nothing really tough here fancy i a rough overpower earlier not being able to finish it up here dink getting chased out by toa wiz might also fall but fancy actually in a great position to stall things out. And Merc is Merc is just the point tank for this team, man. I feel like he's every time we're in a fight and there's chaos happening, it's like <laughs> he's Vivian and he's on point. He, now he's Strix and he's on point. He is literally just point tanking <laughs> for them as he, we see him going back. As is putting on so much pressure, he can't afford to turn back around. They're just going to let him keep capping. 99% yeah, to a point conversion for Team Weimer. Managed to trade things out at least one for one. Things are getting more precarious by the minute for Squid Squad to try and hold on here. Peeks out over the railing for just a little bit and then gets slapped in his forehead. Dink sent back to spawn doors. Because now Asda wants to move all the way up by Mineshaft with impersonation and see if they can hold on as best as they can. As they have this ground taken now early. Look at this Cataclysm actually upper. They don't sync up on the same targets, but they do slow them down at least. But actually, I love this fight <laughs> with Inara right now. It's perfect face-to-face. -face. Inara wins the fight against the Androxus, who just couldn't run away. And we might have to figure out how to catch someone as they try to re-push it. And I think Merc's angles are the best way to do it. For the most part, though, it seems like Weimer are still not really forfeiting a lot of space to Squid Squad. They're still holding on to some of this high ground, holding on to previous positions, but there are some that they've had to concede, like Mineshaft. But even still, they haven't really forced them that far back on the side of Squid Squad here. As they managed to catch one shot into Apache, another one into Fantasy on the top ground here. This thing moves in, goes for the leap, tries to see if he can knock anyone up, or at least tries to go for some cementing damage here as thing gets brought extremely low. Has to back up with the con as they peel out of mine shaft. Counter goes up as soon as the battle shout is used in response. See if he can try and catch anything else, any other straggling damage from behind his team. As now the rest of Weimer have to sort of back up, reposition. Don't want to push up too far now as they've lost a lot of, a couple of their team members. And never mind, they no longer have to worry about anybody being too aggressive because thing goes down the tail end of that fight. Which is going to let Weimer set back up and, and potentially find something here. They're running in, and as if stopping early definitely doesn't want to get pulled or overextend from his team. He's playing a lot more controlled than he was on previous maps, and I think that's kind of what you need to do. And out of control there is Toei finding Dink, and no one else really be able to support it. Apache's so low on the cart. Yeah, he's trying to live for as long as he can, but that timer is steadily ticking down in terms of how long he has, however many minutes he has left to live. Three to one already for Weimer, as it seems like they've turned everything on its head, made it a little bit more aggressive, if anything. They, they, they've sort of just forced things to be in their favor off of the back of really not only Squid Squad leading, but off of how dominating the match that Squid Squad were actually able to win. Yeah, I, I think Weimer definitely were able to continue to be more aggressive, willing to spend some ultimates in ways to... to stay forward. I liked the attempt at the Cataclysm time and space combo. It would have been fantastic had it connected, but it still did end up getting them quite a bit of ground earlier. I think whoever clearly making an impact right now must be Merc because there's a lot of Illuminate getting bought by the DPS on Squid. Even Dink, which means Merc is kind of walking in uh, on this Strix, which one of the best ways to play him actually. And look at this change up. They're so aggressive Ooh. inside. They played outside every time and they've completely caught them off guard. They want to try to see if they can push in through fidget spinners, and they actually manage to not only find one, but two kills on the side of Weimer. They make that a third one, as now they've hit the gas, and they don't want to stop. The brakes are broken for this team that wants to keep on powering through. It's hard for them to really say whether they can make it back on the side of Squid Squad, 
as they might eat too much damage on the way in, honestly. A cursed arm over the wall, looking for an opportunity, finds Dink in the back. And just like I was saying before, the Mag managed to actually find that kill, but they're eating so much damage on the way in. Thing finds good damage on the Toa. They do actually manage to make it back. I thought it would have been a little bit more concerning for them as they managed to actually get Asdiv in a worse off spot than he was. Forces him to be in an even worse spot thanks to the overpower. Same thing could be said for Merc as it's now 81% to 39. I'm trying to think about how they're going to touch. It looks like Asdiv should be able to make it back also. Bond's got uh, close enough maybe to make it work. They have plenty of flanks that can make the movement, but actually Bond's using his nether steps just to poke kind of passively, so it's going to have to be Asdiv who comes around the outside, actually forces Apache back, and now Apache's health isn't that great, plus they're engaging here with a spike. You're already 89% to 99. The time is now in Weaver's favor, but if Asdiv what? goes down, it becomes a different conversation. Will they be able to hold on to this one? It seems like they're able to trade out most for anything. They know Wizdude is low. Will they be able to find the kill? They don't. This is that shot, but Bagel swoops right back around and manages to find the manages to find the kill. It's actually the support that manages to kill him. 99% to a finished conversion for this point. We're tied at a 2-2 and we're going to a game five. Oh, big turnaround by Weimar. I think they just had a really solid draft for Splitstone Quarry. The fact that they had that triple DPS, the fact that they were taking all the space that was being given to them by Squid Squad just playing inside every single mid. They just said, all right, we will sit Quarry and that can work, but I think you need to actually frag people outside of quarry instead of just killing people who come to you not really knowing necessarily where they're positioned but stats i think will tell the story of who who was performing on the side of team weimer i think toa had a great game on that zin we saw how aggressive he was right behind as if when they were pushing inside of the uh of the of the quarry side when he got aggressive behind the cataclysm with that heavy cleaving swing a lot to be to be done there with them just the fact that they had that follow-up when i felt like they maybe lacked it at the start of the set is showing a little bit of a tonal shift in the way that weimer have been playing you know on top of that not only that to be able to win with a three dps lead that's definitely the type of performance that you want to see overall uh we can end up heading to a break almost instantly for the uh for the next following match don't go anywhere as we head as we come back from the break for the paladin citra minor league Just 
into the Palin Central Minor League. If you were watching any time before the break, or if you weren't watching any time before the break, it's tied at a 2-2 just for a little refresher course right there. Squid Squad versus Team Weimer as we head right into Game 5. I'm super excited to see how both of these teams are going to end up matching things tick for tack at this point as we end things, or seems like we're going to be ending things on Ice Mines. Yeah, Ice is definitely a place to go to equalize Squid Squad. Maybe the style that they've been doing, this anti-dive, the slower gameplay, might work a little bit better on ice, but they need to draft champions with good ultimates. They've gotten Khan a few maps in a row, though, so Khan definitely could be one to aim for as Kinesa gets banned again. Kinesa, I, a champion that obviously used to not be as prioritized on this map, but after Stigma kind of forced it all the time, while AG picked it all the time in Europe, I think people realized what it can do, don't want to play against it in Weimar. Just going to stand by, pick that Torvald for the ban column, and Squid Squad actually are going to force Weimer to be a little bit more flexible and ban that ROM as well. Knessa, ROM, now in the ban columns of Squid Squad. Weimer, I've decided to go with Torvald first. Will they try and round things out with here? Will it be the Vivian? Seems like we've been trying to pick anything. Yeah, it is going to be the Vivian okay. on the side of Weimer. We're going to get rid of that, which now leaves open, of course, Corvus and Genos once again. Both good. To see if they're going to... Exactly. Both very, very good healers to see if that's what they're going to start off with. And it is inside of Squid Squad. Geno's first pick is Weimer. Ball's in their court now. They have plenty of options to choose from. It's going to be the Strix first. And I, I'm actually curious about this. We have 1,800, 1800 headshot on Strix. We have good damage yeah. on him. Invisibility. Why ban Kinesa? What are they afraid of with Kinesa? Headhunter, the the snowball factor, okay. the ability to get away from a dive a little bit better. Even though the stealth and the speed helps, it's not as good as literally just teleporting away. You know, right. the, the Kinesa right. is a free out, as opposed to the other way around. Terminus Genos, a strange combination already for the first two. Term has his own little bit of self sustain, but Term and Khan, so Khan a little bit better with it. Leon's shield even maybe for that that boost of sustain that you get with Hope Guard with vigorous defense. I believe the name of the card is, so you can kind of boost up your healing. A little bit with it and team weimer now they can pick another dps to, to to flex it out a bit we'll see if they do go that direction i think bomb king actually not even looking that bad here uh you can splash past the siphon you can splash over the con shield and you also have seen squid play it a couple times so might as well take it away from them but anara will be their pickup anara even after the nerfs is still a fantastic tank whether you play her with cripple whether you play her with mother's grace you're still going to be able to be aggressive with it. And again, I would I would love to see a Bomb King here, but I don't think it's going to be. It's going to be a Zin instead. Yeah, Strix, Corvus, Anara, Zin. Great composition so far on the side of Weimer as you have Genos, Terminus, Khan. And of course, their last two picks on the side of Squid Squad here. Because they have to pick both of their DPSs. Anything, we've seen Tiberius be brought out here before. Means that Strix won't, it means that Strix won't have that sort of back angle to hold on to because he has to deal with Chakram's being thrown at his face every few seconds. And there it is. Tiberius Bomb okay. King. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I, I really like Squid Squad's draft. I, I, I think this is it's a very good draft to end on. Yeah, I think having the BK Tiberius, I, it's, it's a great combination for them. I think it's similar to what we've seen some other teams play. But I think Squid actually played a very similar draft to this when they played Ice Mines against LDS Sins earlier. Am I am I correct in that? I, I think I remember seeing yeah, two of these actually. champions yeah, yeah, in that the, game. The problem is going to be the Genos, right? The Genos right. solo heal will make things maybe a little bit harder. Team Weimer could play to out sustain them, and they might. They have a very stand I, they have a very standard composition that you could literally copy paste into any map, whereas Squid Squad, I think, have more of a ice mines composition. This tiger can poke into the Strix, but really if those bounces connect and Merc gets pressured, Squid can win stage. If the bounces are juked or if the Tiger gets pressured and can't f free fire those Chakrams, then Weimer might just end up owning the window side of the map and making things even harder for Squid. Game, the very last one 
who will come out on top of this one? Let's head right into game and see how things are going to shake up for both of these teams. I'm a little bit more concerned about Ash in the back line, in all honesty, because mm -hmm. that's going to play huge, because it won't matter how well Bomb King control bar, uh, controls Barn. won't matter how well Tiberius controls the enemy's high ground, thanks to his Chakrams, them bouncing around all over the place. I... I, I'm just I'm just worried because I, I feel like that Ash is going to just have a very devastating ultimate in the back line. It won't matter mm -hmm. how much damage they do before then. You can't kill Ash when she's in the ultimate. Yeah, no, she's going to be able to buy quite a bit of time, but the overpower, of course, can stop it. Interesting to see Quashi running the slug shot here. I actually kind of like it. I think it's one of Ash's best legendaries, if not her best on the push. It'll help significantly. But look at this. Apache walled in and actually as if walled up and saved on accident by the Genos, but they can't follow up on this kill. Weaver manages to find one. The same thing could be said for Squid Squad. They've got a one-for-one -one trade so far. Smirk manages to find a nice 1800. It's to the con on the side here. 72% to nothing. Squid Squad now have to scramble to get to the objective to even see if they can find that opportunity to stop them from capping the point. And 6% is all they've been able to garnish for themselves. Because they're now in a situation where Thing is in Parn, not by himself, but even with help, it's not going to be enough to set him free from the onslaught that we were able to deliver. 99% to 6 They've eaten so much damage on these side flanks here, no one's been able to... To, to actually contest on the point. Yeah, no way to Apache just getting stalled out so much by Asdiv trades his life for Intoa. Not able to do quite as much damage as before running that guillotine instead, but guillotine is going to be so important as we get further into this game. Just such an impact on the mid fights where, where ultimates can basically be everything here, but Weimer so aggressive pushing up top. Even though they burst Intoa down, they still have Bonscott uh, up and poking back this con, as the time and space misses, Squid Squad are kind of just bleeding resources. Yeah, two minutes already available. I'm up on the clock. Weemers seem to be in plenty of control here. Assert dominance is what I was talking about beforehand. Now all the personation is done. It's just locked down the side flank right here. He's getting plenty of time to be healed back up thanks to the Corvus. They do at least manage to find the kill onto Merc, which now means that Weemer have a sort of flaw in their offense. It's a personation. The minute that ultimate goes down, they take care of him. And it forces the rest of the surviving members of Weimer to back up if they can escape out of Squid Squad's current onslaught. Biggest downfall, I think, for the Squid Squad draft on defense is that they don't really have an effective spawn holder. Like, imagine Strix right, standing right. in the spawn door. Right, look at that guillotine. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. That caught me off guard, and I'm spectating the game. I got all the info I need, Apache. Split out immediately, and I think they can play some range now with Merc, as long as they can back these members in the top left. Seems like Asdiff wants to hold on to this one by himself. He eats enough damage to at least allow the card to roll forth. They have King Bomb, though. So they have an opportunity, excuse me, to actually manage to make it work for him. The minute that Tiberius ends up landing out of that Blade Dance, Merc actually manages to get the snipe. Throws out the Grumpy Bomb, but Thing dies in midair. Merc. Really, with the double kills right now, it was enough to keep letting Weimer push this. Too many low health pools on the side of Squid Squad, as they have to try and find some sort of way not only to contest, but make sure they don't give this up at the last second. Date goes down too. I, I mean, he just ends up coming back and gets picked off once again. Apache goes down, and they roll this one right on in uncontested. They hold on to their ultimates. That King Bomb is going to be pretty huge when it comes to them. Uh, when it comes to them starting off this next round. Yeah, I mean, they held on to the alts. I think that will help them on this mid, but they also didn't force any out of Weimar. So Weimar are going to have the Assert Dominance. They're going to have the Seismic Crash. They're going to soon have the Guillotine, which charges up pretty quickly on, on its own right. The, the only thing they really spent was that Blade Dance initially, and biggest problem there, the Whirling Assault in, in front of a Sniper when he's below half health. You... You, you, you don't live that. You just don't live it. I mean, you're landing with a thousand health in a spot that is super predetermined in front of a sniper that can burst you for 1800 so not too much happening there but weimer I, they could just go super aggressive with this just use that assert dominance uh, aggressive and early let toa get a chance to charge that guillotine if they even have a chance to flip the fight again they're just going to get executed seems like for right now they use this to start things off with the through shaman's face on squid squad hail mary seeing if they can find 
any sort of hit. They don't quite find it. They have plenty of control over in Barn as well. They're holding on to the King Bomb, but it seems like they want to try and make these a little bit more aggressive counter. here. Beautiful counter as well. They even use, they use everything. They were waiting on it. And Jabayden is how you phrase that one. They use the overpower, manage to find one. Merc is down, Wiz dude finds two kills, but even still, Weimer are the ones in control of this fight almost instantly. Tosses out the heavy blade, snaps his finger, makes it blow up. And then you have a good amount of damage into impersonation as he now has to back off. Squid Squad retake this objective of what was a very good counter engage off of Weimer. And they're still holding this, but they actually still have Assert Dominance and Guillotine. Those are the two ults that are hard to play. And look, Ooh. here comes the Guillotine and the Assert Dominance right on the point. And now there's nowhere for Squid to contest it. No, they don't have the Resurrect available to Apache anymore. They, they, they already lost it. They had to use it earlier. And because of that, Guillotine just goes for free. They now have a situation where they're everybody's by barn and they have to try and find some sort of way out. They can't even. Weimer with the 3-0 so far, maintaining control and their hold over all of this space that they're gaining oh. right now. Even get the kill on Wiz Dude at the end of the day. Almost kills Thing as well. I mean, that's this is this is what you want. This is the type of performance you want out of your team. Yeah, just great play so far, but the tanks should fall here trying to make wow. some ground. Asbeth gets the trade, but Again, trading on Ice Mine's offense, tough to justify. Sometimes here is Apache might actually fall in the end. This could end up going well for them as long as Toa stays alive. But nope, Apache has everything he needs there. But now Merc watching this lane is going to make things a lot more difficult oh. for them. To catch Merc through the floor, throws out the through time and space and manages to catch his ankle. Ends up sending him back to the spawn doors once again. It was good for Toa to be able to stall out. The, the the attention draw the attention to him and stall out his team's respawns for a little bit so that way they can make it back to cart now they're back in a good enough position for them to try and play retake here Merc makes his way back and sees if he can find good damage onto fancy manages to find even more toa with a nice double kill shoulder bash his way in toa with a triple kill he's finding plenty of bodies for his team to step over as they keep on moving the cart forward yeah, I mean, totally down. fine to trade there. If you kill three, your team can get forward. We'll buy you as much ground as you need, especially because that cart still has quite a ways to go. <clears throat> still just don't know what Weimer are going to be wanting to spend here, I guess. And probably not that much, but... Good to they, they use the overpower. Of all the ultimates, overpower is a, is a tough one to, to not have. And if this snowballs, it's going to be even more difficult. Seismic Crash comes in, but Dink might end up staying alive yet. I do 4% available for an impersonation. He wants to charge in. Same thing for Toa. They move in, try to see if they can make use out of that seismic crash, but does it seem like it's so far? A certain dominance in the back. They're going to be able to at least find Merc, though, so that makes it a little bit harder for him. Toa finds plenty of damage thanks to the heavy slash available to him. Billow's out. See if he can do anything. Tries. I, don't know, I think he might have been trying to use the spike for a second. I, I don't know if my eyes deceived me there, but he's actually going to just go down here. Same thing for Asdiv Master. 10 seconds remaining. And no one else really able to touch, but it seems like Merc sort of wants to. He's, he's waiting for a little bit. Ash actually makes it onto the objective here, but it's, 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 she has to hold on. She has to just wait. Cor Corb is already eating too much damage. They're not going to really be able to make it there. They, they just eat so much of the way in, but they still want to try and force this one. And they find another kill on the Merc as well. They've given them enough time to build up their ultimates on the side of Squid Squad. Squid Squad already had most of them, and I think I, I don't hate this decision because they really need time. They needed some time at least to get that Assert Dominance back because that is such an impactful ultimate, and they have the counter to it in the Overpower unless it happens super early. Uh, they just needed to get a little bit closer to their tank, Ultimate 69 on Asdif and 42 on the ash it'll be a little bit harder for them to, to get those in time squid could just engage early i mean they could see not a ton of ways to combo but they could have them get kind of pushed into the time and space that comes from whiz dude he could use it to even after a dismount to maybe catch someone on the aggressive play a bit going on there but i feel like if, if we were just get a good guillotine it's so hard for squid to really react it, it, apache kind of has to face tank it for the team or else it's going to be significantly harder to really make it work Three to one so far is definitely not the score you want to be playing down if you're on Squid Squad side, but they've got all of their ultimates up and ready to go. They're going to be itching for an opportunity to see when they can find it. 
and 6% for Weimer already. Through time, it's space badges to find Merc. Oh. And that's going to be even better for Squid Squad on the way in. A Hail Mary this time, not so much as they actually managed to find a kill with an 18% for Team Weimer right now. All Ash is trying to do is build up that percentage for her ultimate. She can't make it out, so be it. But already using the King Bombs, he's, he's, he's trying to weigh out the counter as well. But they use the Entropic Breach. And no, Merc just made it back, but he goes down soon after that. <laughs> That's so unfortunate for him. The Entropic Breach. The Entropic Breach oh, sends him right into no. the sky and he just goes directly over. He says, it's not going to be me. If anything, and Merc's like, oh, I see. So <laughs> death, greet me. death greets me once again. Squid Squad, they're going to capture this objective, make it a 2-3. It looked like he got pulled by strings oh, yeah. off of stage, <laughs> out of camera, just lifted over to let Merc accept his fate here. As Azdiv actually is, is buying some time in the card, it's not really going to matter, but they are giving them more time to get their Ash back, and this Ash could come in quickly with an Assert Dominance, but they're taking so much damage early, they're going to have to be set running, and they have to hope that their Corvus stays alive. Chakram after Chakram, if you're a dink, see if you can find any sort of of opportunity for your team or any create an opportunity excuse me for your team on the damage you're providing a certain dominance though dink tries to make it out but they find the kill on him will they find no other people the answer is yes absolutely as they clean up pretty much the entire squad here staggering out apache just for a little bit seeing if they can get the kill on him and they do they actually manage to get the kill, okay. They get managed to get the kill on him. They spray him, give him a little bit of a taunt, and just make sure that they now have the zone. Yeah, we'll see how how much further forward they're willing to go. They have to play at least in one long choke point just so Merc can do more. But the way that Merc's holding this, as long as thing keeps him distracted, they could push main and actually get through without taking a ton of damage. And he is definitely distracted, and, and, and here they come in main, but Merc does rotate out in time. So have to be careful for who's going to dive on Thing as the time and space connects on nothing. They go for the, the time and space once again. But Wiz Dude is at least going to be able to get the kill. Maybe not by the ultimate, but Ash is going to go down during this engagement. So now Thing has to back up. Okay, engage in a 1v1 against the Anara as he's being healed up by Corvus. Anara is still going to go down at the end of the day. Merch, <laughs> okay. Merc, fed up with how the situation has been up until this <laughs> point, is going to stealth in, just roll right up on top of Wizdu to make sure he gets that kill. The rest of Weimer are also going to make sure they follow up with their own damage and their own capabilities. Merc, he has to move out of the way, but can't quite find his op opportunity to escape here as the Blade Dance is going to be enough to submit two kills for Squid Squad on the way back. And we'll see if Squid... Uh, they spent an ent every charge of Blade Dance, so th they got to make something out of this at the very least. But Asdaf is still on point. It's not like this is an easy push and then they'll have another chance to fight. I mean, this could end sooner rather than later this offense depending on how far they go with it but toa actually completely isolated but barely escapes with his life and no one's really contesting this objective so for everything nobody except for asdiv even i asdiv have to back off for just a little bit longer so he wouldn't get melted on this mid fight the car is still being pushed inch by inch and especially when you get rid of toa it might even be a little bit better for your team Thing finds a nice double kill as they move in on top of the Anar. Uses the Earth and Gar, sees if they can live for a little bit longer, but not too much longer, obviously. As Weimer is going to take, or not Weimer, excuse me, Squid Squad is going to keep this cart rolling right on forward, and they have to. That overtime being enough is going to be so pivotal for them. Bounces the chakra off the floor and manages to actually find that kill. Impersonation finds two, though, both of them that were on the cart. And because of that, they end this at a 3 2. They still. Need to find at least one point conversion for Weimer. But Squid Squad, they don't want to take this one lying down. No, they they have some ultimates for this. They actually charge the Blade Dance back up. So they will have a little bit of everything. And Overpower, of course, as always, going to be the most impactful thing. But I'm wondering if Bon Scott is just going to hold on to his Assert Dominance just to force Fanzi not to spend his overpower until it's going to win the game, right? Because you know you want that maybe to counter it unless you think your team has other ways to do it, but, you know, let the Ash land, waste the ult, and then pull her away can definitely work out for them. Also, Wiz Dude here, if we can watch him on the rollout, I want to see how his dismounts are with, with him on this Genos Master Riding 3. As, yeah, Genos right here, we'll see how many people he manages to knock off mount, and it's just one? It looks like Bagel got off his, on his own, but the point, the aggressive positioning is already there for Weimer. 
wall is there. They're going to be able to burn that one down. King Bomb ready to go in case the engagement actually happens. They manage to catch the stun as well. Will they kill Thing before anything happens? And they do. Weimer, they take advantage of this situation. Use the assert Dominus to die just a little bit quicker. So that way it doesn't take him as long to respawn. He wants to make it back to his team, especially with such a strong ultimate in their back pocket. Weimer end up winning that one. Seismic Crash. Thing tried to poppy bomb himself out of the way, but he gets caught. He just ends up arcing himself right into the laps of Team Weaver. They take advantage of that. And they have King Bomb. They have ultimates to make their way back, but they have to force something here. Dink, he wants to be the one to start things off with that as they use the King Bomb. They want to see if they can find damage on the Asdiv as well. And they do manage to find it, but they're trying to make sure that Apache can't get there quite in time. He's still going to be able to make it there. Dink moves in. They manage to get the kill on Merc as well. Apache goes down, but they do have the Resurrect available to him. As they're going to try to use for the guillotine almost instantly, they find the kill on Apache Toa. Manages to find a nice double kill. He gets healed up thanks to Corvus. Once again, this is a situation where you have to be careful because we've seen this happen before. Corvus and another flank has been paired together earlier in the set and turned things around. That might be what they were looking for since they weren't able to get the kill on Toa as he retreated into Barn. They find one more, and that might be all she wrote for them. Dink dies in midair, and Weimer take this one 3-2. I mean that that la that first fight on that last mid was it was so hard for I yeah, think Split Blood to really to come back absolutely. from because they they use the overpower immediately on the Ash, which means they don't have the counter for the assert dominance when it does come out later, and they just get absolutely dominated on the barn side of the map because of the lack of dismounts. They get so far forward, they're already pushing into them. They have every ultimate that they really need on a map like Ice Mines, where it is kind of crucial to have them. I mean, Weimer. They make it work on Ice Mines. They complete the, the reverse sweep. And I'm telling you right now, Squid Squad, they're posting on Twitter after game two. Stop the count. We got this. Stop the count. We won this match by a lot. But Weimer came back and, and, and managed to flip things on their head against them. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for Squid Squad, they were cheated out their way out of a win. But it's neither here nor there. The, the numbers I evidently thing, don't lie. Yeah, evidently it does happen quite a bit. Weimer are going to be the ones that take advantage of this situation. 10 and 7, 16 and 11, 13 and 8, 4 and 11 for Asdiv, 5 and 3 for Bagel, but 26 assists for the for Corvus, 24 assists, excuse me, for the Genos. Even still, that came down to the wire. That was not an easy match for either team. Sure, they may end it with a 4-2 overall, but even still, despite that, wasn't easy. <laughs> it was not an easy game for either team. They really had to give it their all thing with 108,000 damage, 99k for Dink, 118,000 for Toa, 92,000 mm -hmm. for Impersonation, 91 for Merc. I mean, you see the numbers right there. Krez, anything that stands out to you? I mean, the, the Slugshot Ash out damaging the Strix on the map, but Strix was kind of being choked out quite a bit by the pressure from the Tiberius, who did end up also out damaging but toa did it did a fantastic job there damage wise the guillotine really boosting those numbers as well I, I think just great play there near the end and a lot of damage soak from asdif so 146,000 taken out of the fight by him and and a lot less by by bond i think the way that bond played this ash was a little bit slower a little bit pokey pokey and i think it worked out for them just by having that consistent damage coming in from the flank that, that, that stressed out the healer on the side of Squid Squad a little bit more than they were probably comfortable with. Yeah, and I mean, especially on a map like Ice Mines where it's so polarizing, losing those fights hits different, honestly just hits different. When, yeah. you're, when you're dealing with a map that's so wide, such so big as Ice Mines is, which is unfortunate for Squid Squad, but Weimer, they're going to be the ones that take this one. That's all the matches we have for you guys today on the Palace Central Minor League. On behalf of everyone here working on the production, Jithens, Kresnik, Merlo, me, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure that you guys also tune tomorrow. in tomorrow at one thir at, at 2 p.m. Eastern. Well, that's I, your I, call I have, time. That's my call. <laughs> that's I keep you using have to be my there. call time. Yes, that's what I have to be there. <laughs> but at the same time, be sure that you guys tune in at 2 p.m. Eastern for tomorrow's PPC community Four broadcast. Four games. It, it, it's it's, it's going to be bangers. Don't you listen, guys. Don't you miss it. It's going to be a long day for us, but we're going to love it all the same. Thank you guys so much for watching today. And you can close us out, gentlemen.